What the hell kind of music is this? What's going on here? I know it's Friday the 13th, but you're a freak, son. What are you doing? And what God blessed time is it? It's Pod Blast time. Yeah, it's not Sunday. It is Friday the 13th as I record this. I have an action-packed weekend, so I wanted to knock this out. Um, hope you're having a good one. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're not being superstitious. I'm a big fan of the Friday the 13th movies. In fact, I got a trivia question for you pertaining to Jason Voorhees, the villain in Friday the 13th Part 2, starting in Part 2, which had its 40th anniversary on May 1st, 2021 earlier in 2021 it's already 40 years old and that was the first movie of course as most friday the 13th aficionados know that had jason as the killer because his mom played by betsy palmer was the killer in the first film and what we're going to do today got a couple ghosts that are going to be my guests today on the pod blast this is from wtza am and fm atlanta radio a little hard tribute we did with a couple ghosts named Al and Tom. I'm gonna to play some of that in a minute, but I have a trivia contest question with a giveaway. I'm gonna give away a DVD set, sealed, new, in the box. This isn't really horror related. Well, it could be, because there's werewolves and monsters, but Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea DVD set will be yours if you answer this simple question. And Barry King, if you're out there, BK on the air, or Alan Sanders of BK on the air, you're not eligible for this. And I know that Barry wouldn't want this anyway because he's already got it. But this is Season 3, Volume 2, Sealed, A Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. It'll be yours. Here's the question. In any of the Friday the 13th movies, did Jason ever kill a baby? I know that's a morbid question, but it's a valid one. Yes or no? Did Jason Voorhees ever kill a baby? Let me know. And if you answer correctly, the DVD set is yours. It'll be mailed to your P.O. box, wherever you want me to mail it to. Also today, on a more serious note, one of my uh, frequent guests, James Tim Walker, he's a Hollywood animator. He's undergoing a very special procedure today on Friday the 13th, 2021. Pretty revolutionary. There's going to be a medical journal written about it. He has Parkinson's disease, and he's having a special surgery. I won't go into details because he's going to come back after he's recovered to talk about it. But get this, he's going to be drawing as he's having the procedure. I mean, that's, that's incredible. And it'll mean more to you when you learn the details of what the procedure is. And I'll save that for when James is back. He goes by Tim. But here's his book. Here's one of his books. And he drew, like, the Flintstones. He worked for Hanna-Barbera. Um, he worked on DuckTales for Disney. Anyway, he's just an incredible artist. And he is undergoing a medical procedure today. And I wish him all the best. So that, that's today as I'm live. But getting back to the topic of horror, horror. You can call in any time with your favorites if you want, 770-438-1050. Even when I'm playing the ghosts, the audio of the ghosts, feel free to call in. I will stop the tape and take your call. And uh, this is got, not going to be a very long pod blast today, but this is my pod blast in place of the one I would do on Sunday because uh, I'm going to be out of town and doing some things. There's a lot of shows going on, comic shows. So with that said, I guess I'll get started with the ghosts talking about horror. And, uh, and I'll be back uh, to answer any questions. And, uh, ask them in Facebook. Um, if you're listening on fistfulradio.com or on any of the podcast platforms like Spotify, Go to my YouTube channel if you want to see all the items I'm going to hold up for the camera while the ghosts are talking. I have a lot of uh, horror memorabilia, primarily movie memorabilia, I'm going to hold up for the camera. And you can find that at The Nostalgic, with a C, The Nostalgic Pod Blast YouTube channel. Or join The Nostalgic Pod Blast Facebook group on Facebook. And you'll be able to see this 
pinned right at the top. So let's try to play. This the, is WTZA, Decatur, Atlanta. That's one of the ghosts named Mr. Al. We'll call him Mr. Al. And this is a rebroadcast of something from a year ago that we did live on the radio. And this lull was live on the air. There's a little operator error by Al there, but that's okay. It'll start in about 15 seconds. Again, the trivia question, did Jason ever kill a baby in any of the Friday the 13th movies? And if so, well, we'll just leave it at that. Yes or no question. And then you'll win a DVD set of season three, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, mailed right to your door. If you have a DVD player or a computer that'll play it. Hey, fellas, you know what time it is? Well, it's just a little after uh, 2 o'clock, and uh, we are in the studio live here for our uh, pod blast. Hello, Atlanta. Hello, Hi. Atlanta. It's Chance speaking. Tom Williams is here. Hey, Tom. Hey! What's happening? I'm hearing a heck of an echo. Yeah, pull your mic a little bit closer. There you go. There we go. All right, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Let me try that mic right there. Here we go. Yeah, why am I? Let's see. All right, I don't think that mic is working. Let's try. Oh, okay. But mine's working. That's all that matters. <laughs> Your, mine, mine sounds really freaky. It does, doesn't it? It, uh, I have no idea. Hang on a second. Anyway, we're live here in the studio, and today we're going to do uh, a part two series of uh, our horror movies. Yeah. The it's, mic's uh, not even on, Al. Well, it's, it's, it's potted up. It's on. And so, I don't know. Okay, you there? Are you, are you there? Yep. Okay. We, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it, is, it is Saturday, March 20. What a joke. A lot of operator errors right there, but that's okay. You know, human error. What are you going to do? Uh, the reason I'm playing this is we didn't have a camera on at the time, and I want to add this to the YouTube channel, The Nostalgic Pod Blast, and the Facebook group, The Nostalgic Pod Blast. So that's why... I'm uh, redoing this because we didn't have this on video where I could do that. So that's what this is about today, as well as celebrating Friday the 13th and all things horror. First 2020, we are live at the Oxygen Financial Studios in Lilburn. We're going to take your calls, 678-996-1776. Today, we're going to finish our series on horror movies. So we want to be upbeat. So after our horror movie show, we're going to do a Christmas show because that's trending right now in America. Yeah, why is that? Why is everybody putting their Christmas lights back up? Because everybody needs some cheer right now. This well, coronavirus in the news, people are down. And well, you know, some people leave their Christmas lights up all the time. I, I leave my Christmas, one of my Christmas trees up all year round, believe it or not. Tom, do you leave your Christmas lights up all the time? He's not talking. Tom. What? Earth to Tom. I, I don't want to share the microphone with Chance. Oh, I see. He's afraid I'm going to give him a disease. No, we wiped it down with uh, Lysol wipes. Yeah, it's clean. Did you wipe Chance down? No. All right. That's, that's, he's, that's, you know, Chance is just part. one of those guys you just don't really worry about anymore. You don't know where I've been. Yeah, so I don't know where you've been. Al, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, I've got to let the audience know I want to warn them about this horror part two. Because when we recorded this originally, a pre-recorded segment, it was around, around Halloween. Halloween time. Yeah, like, it was I like featured you. some of the movies that I that I like that are a little bit spooky because they pertain to the devil. So disclaimer: I'm a Christian. I don't mean to bring anyone down with some of these clips. They're really freaky because you know they touch on our, our deepest fear, right? Well, that's what movies are po supposed to do, whether they're horror or they're they're supposed to drag you in and entertain you, I guess. But we're, again, we're going to end on a cheery note with our Christmas special, which is one of our best shows. So we'd love to take your calls on your favorite I, horror movies. I, I, I don't remember being on that show. I think you were working. Yeah, we I don't know. See, well, Tom does a lot of freelance work, so he's, uh, he's always uh, And we busy. explain that in the yeah. show itself. Right, but, uh, we did. So what we'll do is, after we play the pre-recorded, we'll take your calls, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll start our Christmas show. But we'll be live before the Christmas show and after the Christmas show, and obviously now and after the horror show, in case you want to call and Call us with your favorite horror movies, anything we didn't cover, anything we left out. Tom, what is your favorite horror movie? Then, Al, I want to ask you that question. Uh, it's got to be Frankenstein. Well, no, Frankenstein really wasn't a great movie. 
No, it wasn't, it wasn't. but you're a big Frankenstein yeah, yeah. geek. Uh, well, I mean, just you know, because right. I like Frankenstein, that doesn't make yeah. it a great movie. No, no, Bright of Frankenstein, <clears throat> that was a good movie. But if, as far as horror movies goes, you know, any of the, you know, the zombie genre movies are, are good uh, that I enjoy. I, I'm not a big original black and white Dawn of the Dead person, even though it was the first one. You go back and look at it, it looks kind of... Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, you know, Night of the Living Dead, pardon me. Um, I stand corrected. That's, uh, but I don't like the gore movies that much. I really don't. Uh, I can tell you one of my favorite horror movies. It's a black and white movie. Yeah. It was called The Haunting. The Haunting. The Haunting. And you never, ever saw the ghost or anything. It was just all in your mind. You know, they were in this house. It was haunted. But you never saw a ghost. You never saw... It was, it's just a terrific movie. The Haunting. The first one. The who, black and white one. But, but who was in it? Do you remember? I forget was, the lady's name, you know. Can you Google it and well, see? But that, you know, it's all it's on TV a lot. Well, yeah, around yeah, Halloween time, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, there there was a there was a great movie uh, the Koreans put out uh, in 2016. It was Train to Busan, and have you seen it by chance? No. Train to Train to Busan. It was a zombie movie. But it took a, a place on on board of a, a computer commuter train. I can't talk. And it was actually pretty good. Even though, um, I think you can watch the original with uh, original Korean dialogue with subtitles. And they did an American version, if I'm not mistaken, with, uh, with the dialogue uh, translated into English. But that was a pretty good uh, movie. It's, but as far as my favorite horror movie, uh, I'll have to go with Van Helsing. Which was um, which is kind of a remake of the Frankenstein Jack Dracula. Actually, that was good. Little, I have that on DVD. Helsing. That actually yeah. is a good movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Hugh Downs. Mm -hmm. The guy from Twenty Twenty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you Jack. <Jackman. laughs> I like The Ring. You ever see the movie The Ring? That is a freaky movie. I yeah. saw that with uh, Samantha Livingston. Freaky, freaky movie. Well, The Haunting, the original, had uh, was from 1963. Now, Liam Neeson did a remake, remember? I told you about it was on Prime. Mm -hmm. But uh, Julie Harris was in the original. And Julie Harris and Clear Bloom. But, you know, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. Do you remember The Ring at all, though, where a lady puts a VHS oh, tape yeah. into a VCR and she gets sucked into it and there's a... Woman in a well. It's a creepy well, movie. Well, well, is that the one where the girl crawls through the TV screen? Okay, because they do all kinds of pranks on. If you want, if you look at Facebook a lot, uh, there's all kinds of pranks where they go into like a Best Buy. This is overseas now. This isn't here. Well, they'll go overseas and and they'll they have all the monitors and they'll take one of the monitors and put a fake one in there, and put a backdrop in there and she'll crawl in there. And right. they'll be trying to sell a TV set, and he'll walk away for a minute, and they'll be looking at a TV set, and all of a sudden she crawls through, and everybody runs and screams. It's great. It's I great. got one for you. I see dead people. I didn't care for the M. Night well, movies. I, the, the boo got you, you know, where, where they'll be at. The cheesy you talking effect. about The Sixth Sense? The yeah. Sixth Sense, but there's also movies where there'll be someone behind a curtain and a little alien hand. It looks cheap, like a rubber hand will come out, and the audience goes, woo hoo That's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. It was, it was a rubber hand. But but the Sixth Sense movie was a great movie, as long as you didn't know the ending. Now, if you got, and it was spoiled. Well, if you know the ending, I mean, it, it, that means you get you you don't want to watch it again correct, at some point. Correct. But, you don't because you know you now know all the stuff in. Well, the, so I have the DVD, so I shouldn't watch it again. No, I'm just saying oh. I would not want to see it again. That's just my opinion. You're I would, just weird. I, You're I weird. would never. Want You're to see, weird. I would I, never. I like to, to watch movies again. over and over again. Yeah, some movies, some movies I do, but that's one I probably wouldn't watch again. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, there are movies I wouldn't want to watch again, but I guess. Well, I'm, See? While mm. you guys are hunkered down in your homes, we hope to give you some good ideas of movies to watch. That's the purpose of today's show. Scary movies, and yeah, I'm sure people are more in the upbeat mode wanting to watch some comedies and whatnot. But, um, the only one, thing, I just don't like gore. I don't like, you know, the, the Friday the 13th movies and that sort of stuff. I don't care for those I at say, all. I love that. Well, you're from a different. You don't have to make those sounds. But uh, uh, yeah, dude, uh, actually, you're from a different generation. See, now one of the freakiest ones were the Omen series. We talk about that in the show in the pre-recorded segment. But the second one was really freaky. Damien, that's the one that had uh, Lee Grant. Damien. He was an adolescent, and they talk about famine and all the things that's going on in the world right, right. now, or potentially going on. And ooh, you know, it just really hits a nerve. So you might want to avoid the Omen movies for a bit. I didn't care for those too much. Do you like those, Tom? Damien! 
I had a I had a sixteen millimeter scope, low frayed print of the Omen, the first one, and it, what was what was great about me and Hootie was sitting there and watch it, but it had a green emotion line down the middle. Of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why uh, digital is so much better than film now. Well, yeah. You remember who directed that? He said it had a green line Richard in the screen, like film would do in a theater. A big hit. No, what? No, it was a big hit. No, it was a big hit. Lee Remick and uh, Gregory Peck. And, yeah. yeah. But uh. Well, are we ready to start the pre-recorded so we can get back here live? Yeah, we can do that. This is uh, Horror Movies Part 2 that we recorded last Halloween. Yeah, that's right. It was uh, at the end of September, actually. We were ahead of the curve. And then we'll be back here live. I am William and... Castle, the director oh. of the motion picture you're about to see. Oh, really? I feel obligated to warn you that some of the sensations, some of the physical reactions, which the actors on the screen will feel... Mm -hmm will also be experienced for the first time in motion picture history by certain members of this audience. That's your chance. I say certain members because well, some people are more sensitive to these mysterious electronic impulses than others. Definitely, Al. These uh, unfortunate, sensitive people will at times feel a strange, tingling sensation. Ooh, just like on Friday night. Others will feel it less strongly. But don't be alarmed. You can protect yourself. At any time you are conscious of a tingling sensation, yeah. you may obtain immediate relief by screaming. Uh -huh. Or farting. Don't be embarrassed oh, yeah. about <laughs> opening your mouth and letting rip with all you've got. You mean farting? Because no, the no. person in the seat right next to you Shut up. will probably be screaming too. And remember this. I remember. A scream at the right time yeah. may save your life. <laughs> Hey, fellas, oh, guess what time it is? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's Pod Blast, Blast Time! I'm scared already. I'm, I'm frightened as crap. Good that guy God, is, the that tingler's guy was, in the room somewhere. I, I, you know? I know, you know what, your chance is either the tingler's under your chair or that's the biggest damn cockroach I've ever seen in my life. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of my fears. I hate, oh, oh, I hate roaches. Yeah. You, know, you know, the funny thing. I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm not afraid of spiders, but I hate roaches. Well, yeah, roaches aren't. You give me the but, damn creeps. But they're crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're eating this oh, and you, crunchy, chance, and chances, thin and crispy pizza yeah, chances with eating black olives on it. It looks like friggin' roaches. That's right. That's right. Ooh. Yeah. It's a bug pizza you had today. It's yeah. a bug drop pizza. That's a bug what it is. Yeah, hey, you got some spooky music, Al? Spooky music? Like, think, like no. dark, something dark? No. Like Ooh. this? Yeah. Oh, great. Is Barnabas Collins Set the mood, Al. Out? Set the mood. Go ahead, Al. Set the mood. See if you can do that. Set it, Al. Mm. Scary. Scary stuff. So that's from uh, Chance. What was that from? Dark oh. Shadows, which was a like a soap opera from 1966, I think it was, black and white, but it was about vampires. Yeah, it was. It came on every afternoon on ABC, on and ABC. I watched it every day when I got home from school. It came I, on at 4 o'clock. I wasn't around then, and it wasn't really syndicated, so I have never really seen it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You've never seen any of them? Seriously? I've seen like maybe two episodes seen, on okay. YouTube. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because it, cause they, they started in black and white, and they went to color. Right, and it was all shot on videotape, just like the so it's just like a soap opera. It was exactly mm -hmm. like a soap opera, except a creepy soap opera. Yeah, and, and like those yeah. unfortunate Twilight Zone episodes they did on videotape in yeah, season two. But that's yeah, another yeah, topic that did, for another that, day. That didn't work another pod well, blast. Yeah, I love Dark Shadows though. Well, you know, Barnabas Collins made it and made the show. I think personally, and they had a movie. Well. Yeah, you know, yeah called House of Dark Shadows, I believe. Yeah, they, but that was after, yeah. wasn't that? Uh, after that was the TV. Johnny Depp, right? Was, no, 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 no. Barnabas no, no. Collins, Jonathan Fred was in the movie, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was a movie adaptation after the, after uh, the TV after the series, series went off. concluded. Yeah. Kind of like when Batman Batman went off or was close to being off, they did a Batman movie. Same with the Munsters. They did the same thing. The Munsters had already wrapped, and they did a movie, Munster Go Home. You know, the same, just the freaking studios trying to make another buck. Ah. Uh, not necessarily the best scripts in the world. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, <coughs> that's that's what they did with, with Dark Shadows. I don't even remember 
seeing the movie. Al, uh, do you remember anything about? See, I don't even remember anything about that movie because I didn't. House really, of Dark Shadows. Yeah, I just don't remember. We were gonna, uh, I have a nice one sheet from that movie actually. <laughs> And, and guess what, folks? It's probably for sale this week only on eBay. I need to sell it. Yeah. I need to raise well, some cash. Yeah, you should. Uh -huh. But you know, we didn't, uh, you know, this chance brought up last week when we concluded the pod blast. We didn't even touch on the schlock movies, the, the William nope. Castle stuff who opened our show. Hammer Horror. Hammer Horror. And that was from The Tingler, 1956. And Vincent Price was in it. And, uh, it was a great campy movie. They they would wire the chairs and the some 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 chairs, in the theaters with the little electrodes and give you a little mild shock, and it was pretty fun. The, the ladies loved it. They screamed in the theater, because I remember it. Um, I remember seeing the headlines. Well, let me rephrase it. Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. They talked about it and stuff like that. Obviously, in '56, I was just. I was just a little little tight, so obviously I didn't go to the movie to see it when it first came out. Al, you're old enough to remember that. Al, going to the movie theater and seeing it, didn't you? I was a kid. <laughs> I got pizza in my mouth. <laughs> uh, no, I do remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's anyway. It, it was, it was quite the movie. And William Castle was the king of schlock as far as uh, these amazing little intros. He, I guess he got it from Hitchcock. That's, uh, that's all I can say. But he was a, a master. At, I hear you eating. Can you please kill your mic? I'm not stuff? eating now. I hear you That's smacking your lips. Oh. Well, you were, last week you were eating milk duds. No, that was like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Why are you eating milk yeah, duds? Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that was milk duds. That was, that was a little different. But uh, but, but William Castle was a... Boy, you killed your mic. I, the room just... I turned went, it off. Went quiet because your mic picks up the air conditioner in the room. Now I'm telling people secrets out of... I need to change microphones then. Well, you probably do. But anyway, that's irrelevant. But uh, Castle was was amazing for his on-screen persona as far as uh, being able to deliver the schlock. And people ate it up back then, man. They ate it up. Did, now, did you see? Did you ever see any more William Castle film? Did you ever see The Tingler Chance? I did. You did see it? Yes. What did you think of it? Well, I thought it was... Well, you don't like cockroaches, cheap. so... No, I, I thought it was okay. Well, did kind you of get through it? it did you get through it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because some, some it was cheesy. It's a cheesy well, movie. Yeah, but sometimes the cheesy movies, movies are, are, are like B movies. You are, know. are are fun to fun to watch. All the sci fi movies that, that came out. The, all the so called drive in movies that came out. Not not necessarily monster or sci fi, but even the dramas and and the crap that they have. The cheesy love stories, the the teenage movies, and all that sort of stuff. They even listen. They even had even Vincent Price was known to uh, uh, do a few of these movies. And, I've, and, and uh, so, I mean, let me, here, here's one movie which you might not have seen, Chance. Are you ready for this? Here ready, it comes. Freddy. Here it comes. That's right. You heard it right. The bikini machine? Yeah. That once was a man. It's a Vincent Price vehicle. <laughs> so anyway, I saw that so you American International. American pictures. International. Yeah. Now, now American International was famous for taking movies like this. This movie also had Frankie Avalon in it for crying out loud, and all the teenagers would 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 go to the theaters and see these types of movies, along with the Annette Funicello movies and and, and those type of things. So. But Dr. Goldfoot and his bikini machine, it's it's out there, and it's in scope, and it's in American International, because they were like the kings of, just like Castle was the king of presentation as far as the sh king of schlock. Well, American International put out some real crap. I, well, it wasn't crap. It was fun crap. Uh, they had so many titles in their catalog of uh, of stuff that it wasn't even funny. But this was just one of them, and, uh, and, it was a, and, and he managed to get Vincent Price in on it, you know? You don't remember it, Al? I do. You do remember it? When I worked at uh, Channel 17, uh, Turner Network, we had that over there in our library, along with the other AIP pictures like, you know, uh, what, what was the one with Vincent Price that had the pendulum? Oh, oh, the, oh, pit, well, the, the well, pit and the pendulum. The pit and the pendulum, yeah. That's, pendulum, that, was yes. a, that was another good one, too. And, yeah. and uh, they did the Edgar um, Allan Poe stuff back then. <laughs> Obviously, we're continuing on with horror, and we're going to get on into the next level of horror movies, but we're still talking about monster movies and other stuff that you may or may not have seen in the past. But we do have some 
some corrections to make. I got some listener feedback. Also, that means it's only time for one thing, right? It is. Is it coming? It's time for... Correction Corner! That's That's right, Correction Corner. And Jeff Logan wrote to us saying, Correction Corner should be at the end of the show, not at the beginning. I was talking to my wife about this, and you reference past programs and pod blasts, and some of the topics are things I'm not interested in, so I'm lost. I don't know what you're talking about because I may not have heard that particular show. Would you consider having the Correction Corner segment at the end of the pod blast? What so do you think about that? I have to put that? it to a vote. What do you guys think? I like it where it is, but that's just me. I like it where it's at, too. But, but you know, you know we... Uh, we, we can try it on the end and see we, how it works. No, we, yeah. we, we just can't let one person well, dictate. True. Or it will sound like... Uh, Nancy Pelosi or somebody we, else. Oh, did I look, say that out loud? I'm sorry. Look, we want to have universal topics, you know, so that's why we encourage you to write in, let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and what you want us to cover. That's right. Between the three of us, we've got a lot of knowledge, I think, about right. subjects that and, are and, of interest. And we also have an abundance of mistakes. <laughs> no, 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 during the pod blast, we correct ourselves. An, an abundance of mistakes. And if you hear us making mistakes... Uh, please point them out because we're not perfect. We we don't know everything. We get together and we just have a blast. That's why we call it Pod Blast because we're just having fun. That's all there is to it. And as time goes on, uh, it'll get better and better and better and better, especially with your write-ins and, and your et cetera. Later on, we're going to have people calling in, all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, right, we're going to do live. That's correct. And remember, our Facebook group is Nostalgic Pod Blast on Facebook. And we're on Twitter as well. And we just started that about a week ago, and we've already gotten a lot of people joining, like Evan, who's watching on Facebook Live right now as we record this pod blast. And we're grateful for each we and every one have of you. A lot of people on Facebook. Good. Yeah. Hey, what's look at that? Hey, look at them. Hey, Come Facebook. On. Look at theirs. I can't see it. Yeah. yeah. But but anyway, listen. Um, American International Pitcher. Oh, I'm sorry. I interrupted you, Chance. I'm going to shut up. No, I'm done. Did you, the, did you do the correction you, corner? Did you do any corrections? No. We actually didn't that's have we were, any. That's the only correction perfect? was to correct and put the correction corner at the end of the pod blast. No. It was just what, a suggestion. Well, here, that's it. Here's why there hasn't been any uh, any uh, response from the viewers, because we're recording this. It's my fault. We're recording this on a Thursday, whereas normally we do it on a on Sunday. On a Sunday, so, correct. So we're like three or four days early, because i because I got to go do an event in Chattanooga over the weekend, and I just can't be here. And uh, so the guys got together and said, well, let's just do one early. And uh, that's what we're doing. So we haven't had a chance to check the emails and, the, and the, et cetera. And next Sunday on the 13th, I have an issue. Not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday after. It's Atlanta Comic Convention that I mentioned at the end of our last uh, pod blast, yeah, and I'll yeah. be going to that. Yeah. And then my friend wants to see The Joker that night at the cinema. So we'll figure it Ooh, out. We'll, we'll have to get together maybe on another Thursday night, just that one time, and then we'll get back sure. to our Sunday I, night. And remember, don't routine. go dressed up. They won't let you in the theater if you go dressed up at all. <laughs> well, so I don't know what you're going to do. Well, I look like but, I'm wearing a mask That's all the what time. I'm saying. Well, we're, awesome. usually, we, we're usually dressed up as clowns. And, well, as per... Yeah, Mexicans, as, yeah. Yeah, the Mexican well, the Nacho Libre mask yes. we had on last week. <laughs> right. Because, remember, we took them off. Because we're a bunch off. of clowns. We took them, yeah. yeah, we took them off. And, but underneath that is clown makeup. And so we're going to have to, you know... Pull back on the grease paint, and uh, because Al went to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College, he's a graduate. I did. He's a graduate, and uh, he went there with Penn Gillette, and he Al's a great juggler, just like Penn Gillette. And if, <laughs> and if you believe that, I got a load of Penn crap. and Teller. I'm going to sell you. <laughs> hey, I tell we, you. by the way, we saw that movie. Speaking of P.T. Barnum, The Greatest Showman. It's kind of a musical, but it wasn't bad. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it with uh, Hugh Jackman yeah. and. That's P.T. Barnum. Boy, we've and really got Anyway, we're all over the... Yeah, Woo, we, we need to get man, back onto the horror. Love. We need to get back to the terror. So uh, so as we were saying, American... You know, William Castle's one thing, but American International Pictures, uh, that's, that's uh, James H. Nicholson, and he was a former sales manager at, uh, at Real Art Pictures Incorporated. Now, Real Art did a lot of redistribution of Frankenstein. If you look, I'll tell you what, if you look at some of the, I want to call them reproduction posters, but re, let's call them reissue or re, um, reissue, Al, what's the other word for them? Reissue and um, something else. Anyway. Re-release? Uh, re, re, re-release. Thing. But if you look at the bottom. Fake posters. Yeah, well, no, they're not fake. But if you look at the bottom of the poster, you'll always see it says real art. Or sometimes they'll redo the poster a little bit and it says real art pictures. But anyway, 
that's that's who he was uh and Samuel Z Z Z Zebra Arkoff. Uh and he was an entertainment lawyer. You know I love lawyers. <laughs> and we won't Your even, favorite we people. We won't even freaking <laughs> go there. But uh so I apologize. If there are any lawyers listening, I just haven't had good experiences with lawyers. Sorry. But anyway, uh th- they they were dedicated to releasing low budget films. Uh, and, and they also did it as a bunch of double features a lot of times, especially the drive-ins and the picture shows and you know stuff like that. A- and primary interest was teenagers. That's who they were. Real. Look at this bug crawling here. Isn't this an interesting? There's a bug? moth in this That's room <laughs> on the wall <laughs> anyway, above that painting. Anyway, they 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 See it? they basically on the wall? they Sorry. basically. Uh, That's not a moth. You may tell you what it is. No, it's a horsefly. It's a stink bug. Oh, uh, well, uh, you yeah. know what? Can, can I, can no, I no, 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 no. You don't yeah, mash them because that's when they stink. Oh, I know that. You knew, yeah. do know that, right? Okay. You know, he All came right. in when Tom came in, you know? Oh, just what the he, heck he, is he, that he, supposed to What are you to implying, mean? sir? He was on Tom's back when we came in. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. right. That's right. the only way that stink bug got All in All right, here. so anyway. I think it's from my pizza. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's that's not a black olive. These things loaded with stink bugs. So anyway, the teenagers. I hate stink bugs. I guess pizza won't sponsor us now. I'm trying to stay on topic, and you guys are talking about stupid bugs. Well, he brought the bug up. Well, no, he 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 didn't eat the bug. He didn't bring it up. So anyway, uh, the fifties, the sixties, and the seventies, and uh, so they just they just released it to the theaters, and their first release was the Fast and the Furious in 1955, and that wasn't even a horror movie. But listen to the title, the Fast and the Furious. That sounds familiar. Doesn't that sound familiar? That but sounds it, like it could be a franchise. Well, <laughs> that's catchy. <laughs> it does. It does. And Someone they, ought to make a movie series these days called Fast and the Furious. Well, sure, sure. But somebody should do that. But maybe they, they maybe did. they'll do it. They they released uh, things like Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven with Vincent Price, Peter Lorre. Boy, big fan. Karloff. I'm yeah. a big fan of Edgar yeah. Allan Poe's but, writing. And, and they called The Macabre Masterpiece of Terror, which scares us all to pieces because they did all that stuff. They worked with cheesy miniatures. They they did everything they could to get their movies out there on the cheap as much as possible. Uh, Roger Corman. That's what I was about to. We're in the same wavelength. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Roger, Roger Corman. Corman and Alex Gordon were the principal film producers. And sometimes Charles B. Griffin wrote many of the many of the films that, that came on early. And Ar- of course, Arkoff's brother-in-law, Lou Rosoff, who later produced many of the films he, he had written. But uh, anyway, they, they had a whole uh, uh, stable of cheap people. <laughs> well, let's call them cheap people, trying to get stuff done as cheaply as humanly possible. And, and they had a number of actors. Uh, sadly, uh, I'll just let's just call them B actors or some people yeah. might call them has been actors oh, under contract nice. in the fifties. You know, John Ashley, uh, Faye Spain, and Steve Terrell. Okay, how many of you heard about that? Let's see a show of hands. And no one raises their hand. So Al did. Well, of course Al does because Al's old. But that's beside the point. Um, ha ha ha. Ah, well, that's just we're just having fun. But um, True. but the the AIP they they were actually here's the interesting thing about American International. They were the first film company to use focus groups. Can you believe that? They, they polled American teenagers about what they'd like to see, and, and, and they even used a lot of their responses to determine the titles, the stars, and that's story content. Can you believe that crap? So that's why, in large part, why you have a shooting title, and then it'll get renamed for yeah. the release. Well, they have working titles in all movies, but that's, but yeah. I worked on a movie, it was called The Wettest County in the World. It right. was about Prohibition, and they right. renamed it Lawless. All Star we'll Cast, great movie. I had a little bit part. That's actually a good movie. Feathering a bootlegger, yeah. we watched it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, Jessica Chastain's in it. Tom oh, wow. Hardy, big names. Anyway, but I, but I, but blah blah blah. Sheila Bow. Blah. I cannot talk. I talk like Professor Monte now. Uh, AIP would question the exhibitors. Now I do sound like Monte. Sorry, Shane. Uh, who and and, uh, and exhibitors would would pony up up to twenty percent. Of financing for some of the movies, so you know, what do you think about that? I mean, it's just wow! That that that. That's yeah, what I think of that. Well, that was a good one. That was a good one. I, I'm sure yeah. our listeners appreciate that very good, especially if they were listening in their I, car. I'm, I'm kidding. I admit, no disrespect. I'm learning a lot. Please keep going. No, well, I don't know that I want to. <laughs> if you're going to be burping like that, but uh, the um, 
they called it, and I'm getting this from some publications and stuff. I'm not just pulling this out of my brain. Some of it I am, but um, they, the they used to call it the Arkoff formula the fuck uh, was for that? Oh. producing a successful movie, which included, which include well, low budget movies, I should say, and because because uh, low budget movies are going to be successful somewhat if their distribution is good across all the drive-ins that were popular back then and, and the low-budget uh, movie houses, which were slowly going away because of television. But anyway, th his formula included action, re a revolution, which featured controversial themes or ideas, killing, um, <laughs> killing, get that, uh, oratory, which is notable <coughs> dialogue or speeches, Fantasy, act out fantasies common to the audience. Remember, I talked about the polls that the teenagers took. And are you talking about triple X fan? What, what, no, are, no, what no. the hell are you talking what, about, sir? Uh, what, you, what are you talking about I'm triple joking. X for? All right, I'm sorry. Jeez. He said fantasies. I didn't say triple yeah. X. I'm kidding. And, and then the, one of the last ones, fornication. See? Which, which, what? Wait, wait. Fornication, which is sex appeal for young adults. See? See? Mr. Engineer Al Hardy. See? So that that's that's exactly what it was what it was called and and it's what, art. Yes, <laughs> it is art. Well, that's yeah. that's that's the way it was. But later on, the AIP uh, the publicity department devised a strategy called the Peter Pan syndrome. Peter. Yes, Peter Pan syndrome, which is basically a younger child will watch anything, an older child will watch. Isn't that true? Think about the babysitters and stuff back then who would watch this stuff. My inner child and I are one and the same, actually. So. Right. Well, well, yeah. A girl will watch anything a boy will watch. That's another thing. A boy will not watch anything a girl will watch. Therefore, to catch your greatest audience, you zero in on the 19-year-old male. That was their, that was their M.O. That's, that's how they made these somewhat successful motion pictures. Now, that didn't make them good movies. Tom, I, got I, mean, I mean, how many AIP movies have you ever seen that were, I'll watch that again. Probably not too many. Well, I have a question for you. What's your opinion on these focus groups? Do you think it ruined art or enhanced it? I think it, I personally think it ruined it only it's to corporate, the. corporate, right? It's, it's, it's corporate, corporate interference, very, studio interference. Yes. It ruined radio. It, yeah, I think, I think it does because I, I'll give you a quick example. Even at, even at where I work, we did uh, six pilots to a show back in 2010. And the reason we did six pilots because they kept throwing it to focus groups. They kept, well, no, no, we six don't like pilots. Yeah, that's six, excessive, six. man. We we like this because you do this, and then we redid it and they redid it, and then, they, waste then they showed it to another focus group, and they said, no, we like this, like that. That's what I'm saying. It it, it becomes it, it becomes maniacal after a while. You know what? Listen, if if someone's going to like something, they're going to listen to it. If they don't like it, guess what? They're no, they're going to turn you off. Just like this pod blast. There's, there's going to be some shows where people go, I don't want to listen to this because this does not interest me. Correct. But that's why we try to make each podcast a little bit of everything, which is why it's called a pod blast. blast. Right. Because that way we may stray away from the uh, in, initial intent of our subject matter that evening <laughs> or that day. Uh, but we'll, we will come back around full circle yes. to it. Okay. Like when we talked about pinball and the like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to do a pinball show. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, I got a big surprise for you guys. I haven't even told you about it yet, but I'm not going to say anything now. You bought us a pinball but, machine. No, no. But when we do the Lost in Space stuff, I got a big surprise. In the coming oh, in November, yeah. I got, I got a big surprise. That's all I can say. Lost in all I can That's say. Chance's favorite show. Yeah, well, no one of them. Well, well yeah. yeah, it's it's one of the, it's one of the best. It's shows. a camp. It's my favorite camp show. Well, I guess. sure, sure, but but you know Roger Corman was big. Um, he, he was a big member, uh, important member of AIP, uh, even though he also worked for uh, Allied Artists and his own film group company during the same period. But see, people back then, th there wasn't so much the contract players and stuff still going around in the late 50s or 60s. I mean, there were some, but not like it was in the 30s and 40s. Okay, so people had to go independent. And uh, so, you know, it, it's, just the way, it's just the way it was in the 50s. I mean, films like Rock All Night, Naked Paradise, 
the undead sorority girl, the saga. Of, I can't even never say saw it. any. Wait, of wait, wait, wait. Here's one: the saga of the Viking woman and their voyage to the waters of the great sea serpent. Come on, Ooh. what kind of title is that? You know what I'm saying? 1957. Machine it probably Gun. made its money back. Yeah, well, too. but you probably remember Machine Gun Kelly with Charles Bronson. Yeah, I did see, see that. That was, you know. Yeah. Or, or, what, what about how, Al? Here's one I know you remember. You ready? You probably have a poster for it. Teenage Caveman. No, you don't. Mm, I don't have a poster I, for that. Guy, guys, but that, but that had Robert. But that, but <laughs> Teenage Cave. But that had Robert Vaughn in it. The man from the man from Uncle. Napoleon Solo. The man from Uncle. Kids. Yeah. You know what I'm and saying? He, and he did well. No one will know what I'm talking about, so I won't even go there. Yeah. Why not? No. Okay. But uh, Robert Robert L. Kahn, w which was a great director back then, who, who produced this, a, a lot of those movies, he did The She Creature, which is a great B horror movie. You ever seen that? The mm -hmm. She Creature. Uh, no. R really? You want to no. hear a clip from it? Okay. All right, here it comes. All right, hit it. Scene. Comes the experiences of the She Creature. Ah! That was us screaming. A she creature. Going into a massive murdering monster is what it says. Look at these people. Tom Conway, Frida Innescourt, and Ron Ramsey. It's an adventure into the occult, such as few people have known. I love the echo and truck only those it who see it can believe. They're not going for that supernatural hook on us yet. I don't really know what I'm going for. I know he's a killer. Now you are traveling back through time and space. Farther. I'm so scared. Farther back. Back. Under his spell, she was both herself and another being. The she creature seeking life sustenance from the stolen heartbeats of others. <laughs> oh, that's great. Folks, you gotta look up this trailer. On YouTube. She was a woman born to be loved. And two men want her. One a man whose powerful mad mind controlled her every reflex, except her love. No! The other willing to fight any odds for her love. You've been living in shadows. I want to bring you back to life. Society dances to hide the hysterical terror caused by their sudden intimacy with death. Forever closer comes I'm the scared. sea creature. I'm scared. <laughs> All right, so never forget. All right, all right, so the anyway, she-creature. She I gotta watch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Look it up saying? on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Because that, creature. yeah, because that movie is just that's unnerving. Now here's a funny that's part. Schlock. Now here's a funny part. It was pure schlock. Uh, Let uh, me Al. introduce. You gotta pull the computer down. <laughs> it's okay. You forgot to pull. Let the it roll. Down. Don't don't stop. That's it. a commercial. We don't want to hear a commercial. No, unless they're paying all right, us. All right, no commercials. Kill the okay. damn commercial. Anyway, I'm a uh, public guy. I went to. Uh, I went to. Um, uh, Dragon Con, not last year, but the year before, and uh, there was a guy there selling horror stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, I bought a beautiful model of the she creature. It's on my mantle at home in my basement. Well, you you should have brought I it. I should have so brought it. I should have brought it, but if it never would have gotten broken, then you would have said, "Well, I'll fix it, and I'll never see it again." I've That's never heard of a she creature. <laughs> I've heard of a she male, yeah. but never a she creature. But you know what? Here's the here's the funny thing about the schlocky movies. The majority of them, the hideous sun demon, and the list goes on and on. They had great. Some of them had great looking monsters in them. I mean, just fantastic looking monsters. But the plot sucked. Right, right. The she creature. If you look at it, if you if even if you look up the image on Google. The, the the she creature and we'll put a picture up on the podcast looks amazing it's an amazing looking monster picture the creature from the black lagoon, lagoon excuse me and just add to that, that like a hundredfold a hundredfold just add the crazy Text me a picture I'll post on the Facebook page yeah I'll do that yeah I will do that but it's nostalgic it, pod blast on Facebook Sorry. that's right that's all you gotta do and we'll we'll put up some of these pictures we will even put a side by side picture of the she creature and Al Hardy and you can do the comparison yourself oh well, please do please do but, I want to I want to see what you know, I look like compared to the uh, she creature you will be amazed at what <sighs> how much Al looks like a she, she creature, creature. <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing but anyway especially when his mouth's open <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but all these movies lead up. Now, here's the thing. Back in the 50s and 60s, there was a schlock movies. And, and like I said, American International, even Columbia Pictures, uh, they did the Tingler. They did the William Castle stuff. Uh, they were the schlock film companies 
of those movies. But there was also some legit movies from Universal, some other major companies, which brought in Hitchcock yes, and stuff like psycho. that. Psycho. Hey, I want to ask you, did these schlock movies make any money? Yes, they, they must have been pure profit. If well, they yes, were that they, low budget. They were they were pure profit, and it packed yes. the theaters. Yes, it did because because again, remember the teenage poll group I talked about earlier. Right, the focus the, the group. The teenagers would go see these movies because they got to take their dates somewhere. <clears throat> Guys, how much did movies cost for admission back in those days? Don't tell me a quarter. Well, back well, back in the sixties, late fifty it was a quarter six, well, to fifty good, cents to seventy five percent. Good lord! Let's say what, no more. Let's say no more deal. than a, no more than a buck. I know adjusted for inflation, but still. Wow. But see, but see, here is the thing: that the teenage boys back then again didn't want to take their girlfriends to a regular movie to where they their girl wouldn't scream and clutch at them and want to hold them and stuff like. See, that's what that's what they made them for. Oh yeah. See, remember what I said earlier. They aimed it it's the roller coaster 19, factor. 19 yeah. That's why drive in theaters were there. Yeah. Yeah. Cuddle oh, up, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the drive in was for of that. Of course. Well, yeah, yeah, it was. But but again, that's that's the deal. You go to those schlocky movies, the girl go, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, let's make out. Or whatever. <laughs> you know, or, or whatever. Uh, and people would wear ties and suits to the theaters yes, well, in those days. Yeah. It was an event. Yeah. Wear a yeah. hat. That's yeah. funny. You yeah. know what ticket prices were when I was in high school? That's what I'm curious if about. If you had a high school card. Don't date yourself now. No, I'm not. Well, I, when you had a high school card, you could get to a movie, any movie, any time for 15 cents. That's the, amazing. The, the regular ticket price was <laughs> 75 cents. Well, now, was, I remember that they had student rates like they yeah, have it was senior student rates. Cards, and, yes. yeah. And if you didn't have a student card, it was 75 cents. I remember that. I used to show my college yeah. ID, and I get, they quit doing that. Yeah. yeah. The, like the AMCs, the Regal Cinemas, and the like. Yeah. So they don't do that at all for any students anymore, really? That's crazy. No, I don't know. I, I see senior rate well, and child rate and adult rate. That's, that's probably the film companies. <laughs> well, they have more senior more citizens. That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. They still offer yeah. that, but not they student. They don't have a student discount anymore. They right. used to take it, advantage of that all the time. Well, exactly, and, and that's what and that's what they do, and that's exactly what they do. Now, you talk about the, the Hitchcock. You mentioned Hitchcock. Yeah, the legit, we going there? The legit movies. Hitchcock mm -hmm. did a lot of those. They weren't campy. No, but, but they were very suspenseful. Vertigo. Yeah, I mean, rear window titles. Uh, North by Northwest. That was suspense more than yeah. horror. But and, and I most, love North by Northwest. And his most Martin Landau's in it. In ex small exactly. Part. Small part. And his most famous villain. movie. I was a teenage werewolf. Right, and we talked about that. No, Michael he didn't Landon. do that. No, no. He did not do that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> but talk, but tell us about Psycho world. a little bit. Chance, okay, yeah, Psycho, and I know Al's got a clip in a sec, but uh, Universal released it. Of course, it was directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and Janet Lee was in it along with Anthony Perkins. And Anthony Perkins, I mean, most people know this, but in case you've never seen Psycho, you've got to check it out. And in L.A. recently, they, aired, they uh, screened Psycho in a cemetery just Ooh. last week. And uh, now, I, here, now here's the I thing. know that from watching Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon on NBC, the Tonight Show host. He was yeah. interviewing um, well, they do that at Natalie Holly Portman, and she said she saw it, and then she showed a photo of watching Psycho in the cemetery. Well, here's the, weird, here's the cool part about that, which you probably don't know. They do that at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. They do it on the back wall of the mausoleum. And guess what's right up against the wall? Paramount I, Pictures. <laughs> it's right there. You know, Paramount Pictures is yeah. along the back wall right. of Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And they and they run it, they run it on the side of the mausoleum. That's how that's how they run the movies. Oh, that's cool. Al, can we listen to a little bit of audio from Psycho, nineteen sixty? Here we have a quiet little motel. When in fact it has now become known as the scene of the crime. You have a vacancy? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. You know, this is the first place it looks like it's hiding from the world. I think that we're all in our private traps, clamped in them. And none of us can ever get out. Is anyone at home? Oh, that, that, uh, that must be my mother. Is anything wrong? Am I acting as if there's something wrong? She's not missing so much as she's run away. Put me down! Mother! Oh, God! Mother! What are you running away from? She looked like a wrong one to you. It's not as if she were a... 
A maniac. She might have been a maniac. She just goes a mom. little mad sometimes. Why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Now that music was by Bernard Ooh. Herman, who also had done the Twilight Zone around that same time in 1959. He did the first opening theme, which was a different theme. The doo -doo 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 -doo. anyway, Bernard Herman. I, I, as I said in the last pod blast, I think music really can make or break a horror movie. For sure, can. and Bernard Herman nailed it. As did Harry Mandrafrini. I never can pronounce his name in the Friday the Thirteenth movies or early ones. Anyway. So Psycho, big monster hit. Everyone went to see it. Big shock twist ending that uh, we won't spoil here. Everyone knows the ending. Yes, Herman but... Munster comes out. Because <laughs> it was on a Universal lot, literally, quite literally, around the corner from the Munster Mansion. I, I took that tour back in 2002, yeah. the Universal lot, and it's, yeah. it's all there. Yeah, it's, it's great. All still there. I recommend everyone, if you're in California, to go to Universal Studios. That's right. You'll see Beaver Southern Cleaver's California. house. You'll see Beaver Cleaver's house is on that street. Uh, where they shot the ghost of Mr. Chicken. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. They still got the psycho house up on the hill, which is very cool, which You're is right. very, very cool. And that brings us up to phase two of the horror movies. Now, we talked about the monster movies, and there's, you know, we had, like, supernatural horror movies. We had... I didn't care for some of those. Yeah, I mean, that, that, what freaks me out personally are the movies that involve the devil, you know, and, and God... Well, you know what the biggest movie about the devil was, don't you? Oh, it had to be The Exorcist, the Exorcist, 1973. Yeah. Oh, God, that movie scared the hell out of me. Linda Blair played the little girl who's possessed by the devil itself. And the voice of, I mentioned this previously, of uh, the possessed Linda Blair was Mercedes McCambridge. Ooh. And do you have any audio of The Exorcist or the music or something? Just let's enlighten people with this terrifying. Is your head going to spin around, speech? Chance? It might. You never know. Just keep the pea soup to yourself. Somewhere between science and superstition, there is another world. <laughs> the world of darkness. He's, he's killed my mic again. Okay. Nobody expected it. <laughs> Nobody believed it. And nothing could stop it. Well, I don't know. Experts. You probably know as much about possession as most priests. Look, your daughter doesn't say she's a demon. She says she's the devil himself. Oh, I'm Lord. telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Now, I want you to tell me that you know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with my daughter except in her mind. You tell me you know for a fact that an exorcism wouldn't do any good. You tell yeah. me that. The one hope. The only hope. The exorcist. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. You know, okay. you, you know the uh, the, boy, right. the narrator on that trailer. Okay, it's the same narrator who did Jaws. All right, that's okay. right, that's right. Did you like The Exorcist? All right, okay. I hated it. That's okay. just I th it freaked me out. I didn't care for it we, especially. Uh, our our good uh, dear friend uh, Tom Hudgens had a print of that back then. And Uncensored. We're, we're, yes, we're talking back then, and um, mm -hmm. and we watched. Wonder it, where you got that from. And we watched it. And he had a uh, he had a rep over uh, from K Guitars, which I don't even know if they're still in business, but he had he had him over, and he had never seen it. He wanted to see it, and that guy was sitting there the whole time going, "Help me, help me!" Because he was he was scared. He was genuinely scared. He never scared me. I thought it was, I'm sorry, I thought it was kind of stupid, but that's just me. It's been parodied a lot. In well, movies. yeah, like yeah, Zapped yeah, yeah. from 1982, a, a R-rated like sex comedy. There was a funny. You, we watched that on film. Remember that Al <laughs> Zapped, and they had that what parody. Was that? What they was that noise? Had, that was Tom that was me, that was, Mike that was me, making it creak make, make intentionally. I see. To be spooky, oh. spooky. But remember, we watched Zapped, and they had that parody of mm -hmm. The Exorcist. Anyway, so you had The Exorcist. It was a tremendous success for Wonder Brothers Pictures. Thank you for the clip. 
go out and uh, either stream it or buy it from Warner Brothers Home Video. And then in 1974, and this movie just celebrated its 45th anniversary, you had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh. Toby Hooper. Where's that chainsaw? Where did <laughs> I put Smithsonian it? Smithsonian Institute. Um, it was a $300,000 budget, and it yielded a tremendous, tremendous return on investment. It was a big success. Not my cup of tea, but I, I love horror movies. I'm not, I'm not chicken. I'm not, you know, blood doesn't scare me. It doesn't freak me out. Just the devil movies, like Exorcist, always do. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre, great movie. That brings us up to Al, 20th Century Fox's smash hit. Wait a second. What's what, this? What, what are you I, doing I, over hey. there? I'm starting up my chainsaw. All right. Chance. You better run, bitch! You ah! better run! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Nice. Put that nice, chainsaw nice. away. Right, I'll put it away. Uh, hey, man, I went down to Orlando, and they have Universal Studios Orlando, and they have, like, all month long in October, and leading at the end of September, they have Halloween horror nights, and people run around with chainsaws oh, yeah. chasing you. I sure. went in September 2016, scared the hell out of me, <laughs> and they had a Walking Dead exhibit, yeah. They had Halloween 2 at the time. I don't know if that's still going on this year. But please, if you're in Orlando, go to Universal Studios. You will have a fantastic time. It's awesome. It's all great until somebody uh, falls and skins their knees and goes, ouch. The girl I went with, Samantha Livingston at the time, she got really freaked out by those chainsaws, boy. Yeah, and well, by the way, when she was a little, the first movie she saw in the theater was The Exorcist. You're touching me. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. She I'm, saw it as a little girl. One, she I saw think. it as a little girl. Yeah, her parents took her to see that when she was like, I thought I it was, was like one years old movie. or something. Okay, well, see, well. You, can, you can take kids to movies. I don't know. If, it might have been a parents. re-screening or re-release. I don't know. But she, that was the first movie she saw yeah. in the theater. Can you believe that? When she was like right. two years old. She thought it was a comedy, she told me. Anyway. Oh, come on. Right. But, but the it, the Exorcist said. got so much publicity, we knew it was about, you know, the yeah. devil and Exorcist. I had that gross scene. I won't go there, but I guess with the cross, I'll just leave it at that. It was I disgusting. I don't, think the, I don't think the Catholics liked it too much. Uh, no. <laughs> but Texas but it, it was the Catholics that well, you know, you got know, rid of the devil. Well, you know, yeah. well, you know that there, the, the uh, statue, that, that backlit statue of, of, of Satan, it's in the movie. Yeah. Uh, me out. They now make that as a as a resin figure that you can buy. They're, they're oh, coming out. Oh, how nice! Right. How lovely! Yeah, isn't lovely, that crazy? Lovely. But you know what, Al? You know what, Al? Listen. What's listen. that? I wish to get back to <laughs> Vincent Price. We haven't talked too much about Vincent, my body. Remember, we're in the 1970s now. You got something in the 70s, or yeah, you want to go back? Of course, we can digress okay. a little bit. No, no, no. Right. We've got. The Abominable Doctor Five. Yes, we talked about that last time. That was a bizarre movie. It's a bizarre movie. But it was good. bizarre. Let's listen. What lovely music for a murder, or two, or three, or nine. Who's this? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a dear friend. <sighs> Tell your wife no vibes, but you I will cotton. kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. <laughs> Here, how are we going to get him off this? You take his head, and I'll take his feet. Let's unscrew him. <laughs> Doctor Vibes, who samples the finer things. Of in his own inimitable way. So anyway, the trailer goes on and on, but that's just a little teeny tiny taste of the I amazing. Love his voice. Speaking of taste and Wonderful. tiny, uh, Vincent Price. You know who would have been a good sponsor or a good product placement tie-in for that film? Uh, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Oh. Dr. Pepper. Yeah, Dr. Five was Dr. Pepper. Oh, yeah. yeah, but then they would have been associated with all these murders. That he did, you know, he did like nine or ten murders, and then they did they did several other um, Fives movies because that one, as schlocky as it was, that trailer looked cool. Well, the trailer, well, that's what trailers are designed to do, uh, is to make things look cool. But as 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 often as uh, Price appeared, and he had the great this great makeup, he had a mask over his face, and you never saw his mouth move and blah blah. It was kind of creepy looking, but. Uh, uh, can I spell this so people can search, or you spell it out? No, no, go right. ahead. The, the abominable Doctor Fives, 
P H I B E S trailer. Look that up on YouTube. It's really a cool, freaky trailer. Yeah, it's and it's uh, it's only a couple of minutes, so it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, take up too much of on your YouTube. precious time on YouTube. Uh, but Price did those movies. He did he did a lot of TV stuff as well and uh, promotional stuff. But he was also a very good cook. He he did uh, quite a few cookbooks. Do you have one? Do you have one I don't. I was I was aware of that, but yeah. I don't have any of his cookbooks. He was quite. He was and quite it was six, they sold a lot. I know that from just watching yeah. him on Johnny Carson on a Tana yeah. TV, a rerun with. And he's promoting a book. Well, yeah. wasn't, wasn't he a painter, and they, an artist? Johnny well, Carson mentioned yeah. how successful the, the book sales have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, but he did he did several. And his daughter now tours a, a lot of the convention shows, and we could probably get her on at some point. But uh, she has some great. She, she wrote a book um, a, about him and uh, Vincent Price. A daughter's biography, and you know what? It's now available in paperback, and it was it was uh, written by Victoria Price. That was Vincent's daughter, and uh, she traces her father's sixty-five year career because he started in radio, just like a lot of the. Uh, I love radio. The old, uh, or even Karloff was on radio. I, I'm not on radio. Yeah, I'm not hundred percent sure Bella was on radio because he was. He's, he was kind of hard to understand, unfortunately, back then. But uh, he did Broadway, television. Uh, Price did everything, and he was he was a consummate gentleman. Um, he, he was he was Jack Benny's nemesis on like three or four shows. I had him on film, and uh, he always thought Jack Benny was such a he thought so much of himself, and he really wasn't very a very smart man. And that's how he played it. And it was great. They were great friends. Now, don't get me wrong. Just like Jimmy Stewart and, and Benny were really good friends as well. That's why he was on the show uh, so much. But th the book is called Vincent Price, A Daughter's Biography. And it's actually very, very good. It's even got a forward by uh, Roger Corman. Uh, but, but it's a good book to look for. As a matter of fact, uh, as I'm looking at it, you can get it for $12.09 right now. That's fairly cheap. On Amazon Prime. Why am I giving them a free ad? Free pop, pop, or whatever. Well, maybe we can use Man, it for everyone a sponsor. knows Amazon. Well, everybody knows Amazon, but 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 you know the price. Like the air you breathe. Well, yeah, of course, the, the air you breathe and, and all that sort of stuff. But but uh, they did uh, the bottom of Doctor Fives. He did. Well, I think it was three other movies. Um, he did. Uh, it's right here. See, I didn't know they had sequels. Yeah, yeah, of course they did. I know the original. Yeah, the Bottom of Dr. Five. That was 1971 because we right. were in the 70s just a little while ago. Correct? Yeah, we're in the 70s yeah. now, baby. Yeah, baby. So, and then, there, and then of course, in and around this time, Dr. Fives Rises Again, which was the sequel. That was 1972. Go figure. So they must that's have been like successful, the, that's obviously. It's like the next year they did a sequel. And then, wait, I'm not done yet. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I am done. That was it. That, I just want to add I that when I was a kid... One. In the library, I'm talking elementary school, the monster books were my favorites, the ones that had pictures of all these monsters, and Dr. Fives always was one of my favorites. Well, that became, that's, that's a cult film now. Yeah, actually. I love anything with a skeleton or a skull. Like in the Omega Man with Charlton Heston, the last man on Earth, he pulls back. He finds a bed, right, and he thinks there's going to be some people underneath, and he pulls the covers back, and there's all these skeletons that are all decomposed bodies. It just always spooked me when I watched it in reruns. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's tells movie of, reruns. There's Tales of Terror, Mask of the Red Death, The Oblong Box, the titles the House of Usher. We talked about briefly the Pit and the Pendulum, The Haunted Palace, which was a great, great. That's movie. a good one there, yeah, Haunted great. Palace. That's yeah. a great movie. Yeah, The Conqueror Worm uh, was another one. I mean, there is just so uh, mad, uh, Madhouse. I mean, when did he pass away? When did who? When Vincent who Price. Vincent Price. He, gosh, when did he pass away? It wasn't. Uh, some years it, it ago. It must like have been it, in the 80s, no? It didn't seem like it was that long ago. But <laughs> was it, that on? Well, it was actually uh, October 25th, 1993. He was 82 years young. He lived a long time. Yeah, born 1911. 1911. He was, he was actually, Al, he wasn't so much a painter. He was an art connoisseur and collector. That's what it was. Okay. That's what it was. Like Red Skelton he collected was a art. Painter. Yeah, Red Skelton was a painter and you know, people like that. Uh, uh, was a painter. Even Larry Storch paints now. It's it's kind of like when these old Tony Curtis started painting, right before he died. It's like these old actors they they don't get hired as actors anymore. So what can I do? Well, I, I guess I can paint. <laughs> so 
That's what a lot of Tony and Curtis some presidents like too. Well, some. I don't want to mention yeah. names. Bush. I don't want to mention names. Nah, Bush. He's we're going to alienate. <laughs> we're going to alienate people. But you're right. Yeah. George W. We're talking about. His, yeah. yeah. His so paintings, what, actually, his paintings aren't bad. I'll so say. what does he do? Just paint big paintings giant W's? Bad. Is that what he does? Actually, he paints portraits. He paints portraits of yes. human of beings. People, of people. Really? Yeah. How do mm-hmm. they look? They look actually, like they look, actually look pretty good. They actually. They don't look like cheesy folk art or folk art. I can't talk. Folk art. I can't talk anymore. That's all there is. It to looks it. like fin- finger painting. But guys, there there were so many Price films. I mean, for crying out loud, we could spend several shows on it. But he was an amazing actor. Uh, many genres, uh, horror genres. He could also do uh, serious dramatic roles, which he did do, um, and that weren't necessarily horror. And uh, he he, he, he could, was funny too. I, I, yes, and he could be funny as well. He could be delightfully funny. Uh, as well as uh, I'm sure I could find a clip, but I won't. I won't digress. I watched him yesterday <clears throat> on TV, Return of the Fly. That's not a comedy, yeah. I know, but I, I said Vincent Price. I watched him yesterday. Well, it's funny that he turned to a fly. Oh, he didn't turn into. No, he didn't turn into. David turned. Hedison was the fly. And he just passed. We should have talked he, about that last and he, time. And he just passed one. away recently. He did. Too. Well, we can do a and show. His daughter, oh. by the way, his daughter looks just like him, and she's really? in her, his daughter. Is involved with Jodie Foster, and that's really was. and that's really something because she's a girl. Yeah, she looks nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just pointing out facts. No, 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 that's factoids. Quite all right. Factoids, uh, factoids, but, but the, the interesting thing is, I mean, literally, his daughter looked just like David Hedison. Wow, which is strange. I mean, anyway, I think it's uncanny if you look side by side; they look almost identical. We'll so, do a show on Irwin Allen sometime. Oh yeah, we're gonna with the Lost in Space. We tease. Yeah. We're gonna handle yep. that in November yep. after Halloween, yep. and that's gonna be a big pod blast. I have tons of clips and things to talk about. Did you know? I'll, I'll just share. I'll tease it a little bit. Jonathan Harris, Doctor Smith himself. Now I'm straight. Not there's anything wrong with anything. He pinched me on the ass back in 1992 at a convention. Uh-huh. He goes, Good night, chance. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> uh, it freaked me out, but I liked him. He was. <laughs> Great guy. I just said, "Oh, good night, good night, sir." This was this was when I was oh, really that's, young. Well, that's close to the surprise. We, we I was just tell we're you having about. drinks with friends at a hotel. Like right. anyway, but he he was a, a good guy, Jonathan Ayers. Yeah, he was he was he was a character great, actor. Yeah, he was a great link from the Bronx, Lincoln. but he sounded like he was from England. Of course he did. He did yeah. that accent, but he was from the Bronx, New York. Acting, mind you, acting, acting. So uh, you talked about Psycho. Now that was that the only. Uh, picture like that that uh, Mr. Hitchcock made Certainly in that not. genre? Certainly not. Well, tell us more. Tell us more. What have you got? Of tell Hitchcock us more. specifically? Well, not necessarily Hitchcock, but the films from the 70s. Okay, were... well, we, we already talked about The Exorcist. Now, to keep on that devil type... I know what you're going to say. Uh, the, the Omen. The, the Omen. Yeah, Freak that's me what out. you're going to say. Uh. Richard Donner directed, and we have a couple clips with one of those chilling clips where a woman hangs herself in front of five-year-old Damien oh, and great. says, It's all for you. We and only they did have a terrible one. remake. We just have one clip. Yeah, let, let's roll well, it. Just probably, one short. It's brief. It's probably a Was it an Omen? Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. <laughs> The 20th Century Fox presents a film of psychological suspense about an occurrence of earth-shaking importance. Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, The Omen. I was at the hospital, Mr. Thorne, the night your son was born. I saw its mother. I saw its mother. I have fears. I've seen fears. Got fears. Its mother, Mr. Thorne. You saw my wife. It's mother. What is it? You're trying to suck. His mother was a child. His mother was a bitch. This is not a human child. Make no mistake. There are those who die for him. There are those who will kill for him. Who is he? What does he want? Where did he come from? And can he be stopped? <laughs> Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, The Omen. No! Good cast. Well, well heck, uh, listen, Al. Jeez. Al, damn yes. God, if we're going to play that one. Stuff. Al, if we're going to play that one, then uh, play this one. Here, here's another one. Here you go. Here comes a weird world. This is Black Sabbath. <laughs> Boris Karloff. Warning. 
this picture is for people with nerves of steel. I love those screams. I said someone's eyeball get ripped off. <laughs> it's a lot of women screaming. <laughs> Attention, all thrill seekers and horror show addicts. That's what the that's what the uh, screen says. Attend our giant all color spookathon. <laughs> more terrifying, more mystifying, more horrifying than anything you've ever seen before. That's what it says. It's chilling. It's thrilling. It's the most. Oh, that's great. We warn you. Don't, don't come, come alone. alone. Bella, you'll never believe it. All right, here come the cops. Live PD. Horrific and all new. As ancient as superstition, as modern as the telephone. <laughs> Dr. Butcher, MD. Medical, Medical Deviant. Deviant. <laughs> I can't take any more. I can't take it. That sounds as absolutely well, dreadful. Well, basically, that, that yeah. was, you should have seen it. Yeah, you should have yeah. a guy getting his eyeballs ripped out. Yeah, well, in color, I'm blood glad everywhere. That. Well, that was from uh, the weird retro drive-in horror show. Jeez, there's that stink bug. And there's a stink bug. The stink, stink bug, bug just landed on my nose. Ladies and gentlemen, the stink bug get has just landed. Where do I put him outside? Wait, take him outside because the stink bug has just landed in front of Chad's Oh my God! It's going to give humanity of it all. Ow! Oh, what will we do? Feed it to Sonny the dog. Sonny will eat that just as quick as you can but don't smash it because if you smash it it'll stink like one of one of Al's belches <laughs> got the stink bug so, didn't we so wow what do you say we lock chance out and we'll just finish the show okay so, we can do so. that <laughs> let me close the door yeah I close the door yeah, I close the let me lock it there we go I've locked it chance can't get in now ladies and gentlemen so now we can do the show no uh, cut oh, keep rolling oh wait did you, th did you put him outside yeah, I'm outside here's Sonny are you still rolling I thought yeah. I locked you out chance Chats, I thought I locked you out. I have returned. But the, Where, where's Sonny at? He's right here. Keep rolling. But the stink right. bug has returned in the form of Chance Bartels. He has turned into a weird, horrifying, stink bug. Stink bug from hell. Right, Al? That's right. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad he got him out of here. I hate those things. Like yeah. I said, he came in on the back of you. Yeah, right. So, uh -huh. anyway, so anyway, these movies, these movies live and breathe uh, on television, late night television, whether it's me TV. Or whether there's there's a channel on Roku called the Monster Channel, and there's all these now newly relived horror hosts, uh, Dr. Basil Grimsley. There there's uh, uh, several others that are out there. Sammy Terry, get it? Cemetery. Sammy Terry. Uh, he does horror shows, live horror shows as a horror host, and of course, uh, someone that uh, Al Chance and uh, Alan uh, Chance and I go see here at the Plaza Theater in Atlanta, uh, Professor Mortes. Well, they got the House on Haunted Hill coming up. Yeah, and, and he's only going to do a he's only going to do a matinee. He's only going to do a matinee, but that's beside the point. So he's not a ten o'clock show. Nope, he's just doing mm. a matinee at uh, like at uh, I think it's one thirty in the afternoon. We can go that, can we? Nope, I won't be here. No, but that's well, Chance and I can go. That's, that's okay. I don't have to go to all of them. But there's so many, again, there's, just like with everything in life, there's so many movies of this genre that we've just barely touched upon. And Chance, you wanted to touch on some You're other right Yeah, movies. yeah. I, I'm, I've got... Like I don't care. I've got a lot, and we're going to go into the third phase of the horror genre, and it all started in 1978. The daughter of Janet Lee, who was in Psycho worked on a small independent picture, low budget for John Carpenter, which is now a cult classic called Halloween. Michael Myers. Oh, you mean, oh, Bill Shatner. That's right. Thank you for mentioning that. It was one of my things. Most people don't realize the mask that Michael Myers, the killer, wears in all the Halloween movies. 
is a William Shatner Captain Kirk mask. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, why did he use that in, he wore that in Star Trek? No, it was a toy from 1976, oh, I believe. Oh, that, I see. see Star I'm Trek, not up on that stuff, I'm it, sorry. Well, in the 70s, hey. Star Trek had a huge comeback. In 1972, the first Star Trek convention happened, and it became really popular. So then there was a whole new wave of merchandise, including a Captain Kirk mask. But why do they call it a Captain Kirk mask? Well, because it's of Captain Kirk, yeah, William yeah. Shatner. So it you doesn't can look like Captain Kirk. It was a Halloween mask to dress up. It does. It looks like him. It really? does. It, yeah, he knew the features back. of his face yeah, at the time. Back, go back and look. Go yeah. back and look. So, and, and so that was Jamie Lee Curtis, and that put her on the map, and she became the scream queen of horror movies. I can't hear my mic anymore. I hear That's you. I don't hear and uh, International Pictures released Halloween, and then eventually Universal Pictures bought the rights, and they produced Halloween 2, and that was released in uh, 81, shot in 80. But I'm jumping ahead here. So Halloween, the night he came home, as Tom said, that was the tagline. And, you know, it was, in my opinion, less is more. And there wasn't so much gore in it. It was more suspense and genuine terror. And that's why I think it really became so popular. Tremendous success at the box office great musical score and by the way john carpenter did that music the theme halloween was by the director john yeah, carpenter yeah, i remember that i remember that yeah. do, 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 do. and i think we he did the music right yeah do you oh. don't you have the clip of halloween i know from the end of our last pod blast you had it I, just look for it while i talk about halloween but a why bit. do we need that we don't i want to play a little bit of it because it's an iconic theme don't argue with us al yeah. have you had it. follow orders al making me work over here oh, tom's the director baby. here Poor baby. I'm the assistant director. Just follow orders. I see. Mm -hmm. But Halloween, it was just, of course, uh, as you all know, just an awesome movie. Um, I don't know. I think this is it right here. Can you turn up your game, sir? Oh, I'm not scared yet. There that's it. Is. It plays. That yeah. That that's all you. Play. That's all we're hearing. Okay. Yeah. It was short. You know, we didn't use all. We didn't use all of it. I sent you the whole thing. Well, that's okay. No, that's we cut it down. Seconds. We cut it down. Okay. Okay. We can't play a whole lot of that music. <laughs> all right. Inside baseball. Speaking of baseball, well, I won't go. I was gonna, as we record this. No, don't go there. We're gonna there's talk some about playoffs baseball. going on, and I'm keep my eye on the score. So, all right. So, Halloween's launched a whole bunch of what I call slasher movies. That's that were gory. That had gross out effects and things but the audiences loved it i will flash forward to 1980 friday the 13th oh. filmed in 79 for paramount pictures and uh and then you had also in 1980 the shining stanley kubrick's movie with jack nicholson and oh, shelly so duvall and yeah. scatman crothers one of my favorite actors Scatman. The Scatman. he's the, he's the african-american bald actor you saw in so many movies like twilight, twilight zone, zone the movie thank you and kick the can segment yeah. Uh, wasn't that the one that Steven Spielberg directed? He directed one of them. Oh, Toby Hooper did Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, the remake of the Shatner piece. Yeah, there was, there was, there was several directors. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Spielberg, recall. right. And then there was, oh, and <clears throat> poor Vic Morrow was beheaded in a segment in Twilight Zone, the movie, yeah, where he yeah. It, it took place in Vietnam. He played a terrible bigot, mm -hmm. and he was trying to save two Vietnamese kids. I think he killed kids. He had a change of heart at the end. It did. And, and John Landis good. directed that, and he was sued. It went on in court for years and years and years. And John Landis, by the way, had a comeback after that with Thriller. He directed the Michael Jackson Thriller music video narrated, as we mentioned last pod blast by our Vincent Price. Of course. So Vince. that went, so you had The Shining, and then Friday the Thirteenth. I want to just play a little bit of the first trailer. We didn't sample the whole thing, but I want to take you back to 1980. This was the most financially successful of all the Friday 13th, and I'll Friday, share with some... the 13th. You may only see it once, but that will be enough. I love that scream. Those are great screams. Friday, the 13th. So Friday the 13th, let's talk about some box office. If you adjust for inflation, the first Friday the 13th for Paramount Studios earned $133,155,700. The unadjusted gross was $39,754,601, released on May 9th, 1980. Now, quickly, it was quite a franchise. They produced many, many movies. Woo. The most successful one... It's like saying woo. <laughs> Freddy vs. Jason. That was the next highest grossing 
of all the films at 123,454,000. Then Friday 13th Part 3 in 3D, which we covered, I played the trailer of it in our last pod blast, then Friday 13th Final Chapter. The 2009 remake, which is by Warner Brothers, wow. which is unusual, not Paramount, was the fifth. Then Friday 13th Part 2, number six, number seven, Friday 13th Part 5, number eight, Friday 13th Part 6, number nine. Friday the 13th Part 7, Jason Takes Manhattan. That's a tongue-in-cheek. It's got a little bit of comedy. Well, they all had comedy and TNA and stuff. Then Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. That was the, fi that was the last one? That's what the title. Nope. And then Friday the 13th Part 8, and then Jason X is the last one. So collectively, you know, you're talking about a billion-dollar franchise. So you may hate it. You may love it. But it was a big money. I didn't care for him. But, and know. that's cool. You know, I did. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I like the first three. You know, the third one was the first one with the hockey mask, the one in 3D. In the second one, Jason was the killer. In the first one, it was the mother. But in the second one, he wore like a potato sack. But, I mean, they were pretty gruesome. There's one murder in part two. I, I, I find it hard to watch with a guy in a wheelchair. I won't discuss any further than that. It was a little brutal. I mean, I think it was too brutal. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, so you had that. And I'll let Tom jump in here. But I'm going to just name some names. No clips, no nothing. Of okay. some slasher films that are notable for my generation. You probably saw them on HBO and Showtime running endless. All right. Here's Terror Train. Then you had Fun House, Prom Night mm. with Scream Queen Jamie Lee Curtis, who is the daughter of Tony Curtis yes. and Janet yes. Lee. Uh, the Howling that we talked about last pod blast. I love the Howling with uh, the lovely Dee Wallace transforming into a werewolf on camera. Mm. And then you had, and I know you have a clip of this, Poltergeist in 82, which my generation loved. It was a big hit. That's Steven Spielberg, Spielberg executive yeah. produced it. I like it all right. Directed it. There's a scene where a guy pulls his face apart in a mirror it was like a nightmare sequence oh god do you have a clip i love the line by that sweet little girl Hello. they're here sweetie remember last night do you remember when you woke up and you said you're here uh-huh well who did you meet who's here something's funny going on here next door Something, uh... We were wondering if maybe you had experienced any disturbances. Like, what, like a gangbang? What kind of disturbances? I don't know what happens over this house. I've never seen skinners like it. That thing is in there with my baby! I don't get it. Now Steven Spielberg crosses a frightening new threshold into a world within our own. All right, so that you know that was that the was, end of the clip. No, that wasn't the end of the clip. But that, but oh, we could, man, we could no, play, it ends. We right. could play it forever. No. You know? but sadly, uh, she died on the operating table. She, uh, the little girl. She did, mm -hmm. and she yeah. started in Happy Days. With the Fonz and her wink was right before that. that. Yeah, she was a regular for just one season. She was the daughter of someone the Fonz was dating. Well, that's I'm talking going about steady the, with. I'm talking about the little girl. Yeah, the real, the little the girl. actor. Yeah, yeah, not not the not the sister. She died at the hands of, of a, a crazed ex boyfriend. Yeah. That was a boyfriend that's, that yeah, killed that's, her. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the little girl. O Dominique. That was her name. Dominique Dunn, who was <clears> murdered. <throat> yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about O'Rourke. Heather, right. I think it was a Heather O'Rourke. O'Rourke. Correct. Yeah. But she was on Happy Days. I didn't know she was. She, on Happy that's Days. where she got her start. Her big break was yeah. on Happy Days. Yeah, I thought a big break was. Yeah, that was now. There was a show I loved, which Al doesn't know about. It was just released by Warner Home Video on Blu-ray and streaming. V. It was a miniseries shot in '82, released in '83, and uh, Dominique Dunn was in the cast. And they shot scenes with her around the time she was murdered. And they had to recast her and refilm all her scenes for V, which was an alien invasion miniseries about lizard people that wanted to come to Earth ostensibly to be our friends and save mankind. But they really wanted to. Here's a Twilight Zone reference. It's a cookbook. Yeah, they really yeah, wanted to, to eat man. us. To they, they wanted to, to serve man. Yeah, Very good, yeah. sir. Season three, Twilight Zone. But, yeah, Dominique Dunn, that was a tragedy. And I've met the director, Robert John. Uh, I forgot his name. Oh, my God. Oh, well. Well, Chance forgot his no. name. Well, it's a sh it's a shame yeah. that it's a shame no. that the aliens didn't. He's take the her. director and writer. Johnson's his last name. All right, just, just call him Mr. Johnson. No, <laughs> <laughs> that covers it. Well, it was Mr. Johnson, not Tor Johnson, uh, from Plan Nine from Outer Space fame, but Mr. Kenneth Johnson. 
Close. Kenneth Johnson. Jeez, Louise. Close. I met him in Burbank, California in 07. I met him in Tampa in 06. And he said, Chance, I don't want to see you at another convention. You've heard me enough. I like you. I like Samantha, who I was with at the time. He goes, I don't want to see you or her at another convention. He goes, oh. we're good. Really? He was being nice. Yeah, he thought, he thought, look, I've said everything I can possibly say. Right. And he, he did a lot. He created the Bionic Woman spinoff. He, he did, created Incredible Hulk TV adaptation of Stan Lee's character for Marvel Comics. He's a really good director. He typically would direct the pilot and maybe a big two-hour episode and a mm -hmm. season premiere. But he's a really good guy, and I, I wish he'd have a comeback. And he could not stand V, the final battle, the follow-up NBC miniseries, which also was a rating success, or the one season of V as a regular series. He well, just, they ruined his concept, in his opinion. Well, he's probably just living on a beach somewhere off his, uh, yeah. off his royalties. What do you think? He, no? He, hey, he told a funny story. He, yeah, I would think. He, I know. He, um, he passed on... Gas? No. <laughs> <laughs> he passed on something that would have set him for life. Really? Think Chuck Norris. It was a big hit show that Chuck Norris did in the oh, 90s, early 90s. Texas Walker, Texas Walker. Ranger. Walker, Walker Texas, Texas Ranger. Texas Walker. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Bellasio Productions wound up doing that, but he, he passed he on it. He passed on that. Yeah, oh, and that, that would have put him mistake. on Easy Street. That was a big mistake, because I know that was so, Al's favorite show. Al's not paying a bit of damn attention and, to what they're doing. And, and, I was I looking wanna, at Facebook. I want to refer you guys, because I had a big horror phase in my life, and I still like horror. And I used to read a magazine called Fangoria, oh, and yeah. that's I published have the, by well, see, I, I, Cary O'Quinn, who did Starlog. I have stacks of those I, still. Uh, and I and I remember when that magazine came out, I subscribed to it. It was, it was one of the first magazines I ever subscribed to, and but it got so gory. It, yeah, like, okay, on the cover. A, that's, uh, yeah, on the cover. I said that's enough. I, I was a little little kid, and I got in trouble at school. I bring it yeah. to school and pass it around teachers. Oh no! Oh man! Yeah. No kidding! I bet you did get in trouble. I got in a lot of I mean, trouble. With Fangoria at I mean, school. Fa I mean, Famous Monsters in Filmland's one thing, but uh, Fangoria, oh, that's pretty. It's hardcore gore. It was, how many of those things you got? You got a bunch of them? Oh, probably maybe 50, 50 wow. issues. Well, they still make it. They make, it's still, still around. Out. Starlog isn't. Yeah. It's sister, or actually father publication, but Fangoria is. Now, so just a few more obscure horror movies. Motel Hell that Al and I were talking about before we rolled on this podcast. I like that That was movie. a weird one. Yeah. Weird one. And then you had, with Ron Howard's brother, Clint, he did a lot of movies yes, in the did. horror genre yes, did. to yes, get a paycheck. Did. And yeah. he did one called Evil Speak, which really freaked me out, <laughs> where he played a rejected teenager, and he uh, had this computer program, and it got into satanic stuff, and ugh, it freaked me out. Well, you, so, want, you want to play a clip from that? No, we don't. I didn't even load one, because it's just so bad. And okay, all right. No, well, no, we, could, we, no could, need, we could do it. No need. That's no okay. Need. All right, all right. We'll, we'll pass on that one. Folks, that will be a pass. Continue, Chance. What else you got? Well, heck, we could do another pod blast on horror another time, but that's really all I had that were noteworthy. There's so many. Well, that's I could it, go folks. on Good and night. on. No. No, no, we could go on and on about others, but other horror movies of the time. I, that, that's all I watched, practically, were scary movies and slasher movies and monster movies. Oh, really? Along with sci-fi. Okay. Well, what about... Now, what do you got, Tom? What about this right here? <laughs> Started at the record hop. Had they known the black monster waiting outside, that's what it says. And the car rolls over the, the cliff. Still warm. Say, did you see the skid marks out here? They go at a direct right angle to the direction of travel. And we don't mean in the no shorts. in the macadam either. Somebody was hurt. There's blood all over this thing. What is this black menace that kills everything it's it sees? A, and you're a racist. <laughs> No human mind could imagine the enormous destructive power of this maddened, killing thing. It's a kilo monster. That's all it is. If you're young people in love. It's an iguana. Yeah. It's just a big old lizard. That's yeah. all it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If you're driving a lonely road, you're as good as uh -oh. dead. Uh -oh. <laughs> Folks, the giant gila monster. There's been a lot of livestock missing lately. That doesn't make headlines. But now it's people. Never in the history of the United States, a monster of such size and power and horrifying hatred of man. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you should see this. An amazing, kong like monster terrifyingly erupts on the plantation, on the population. Devouring people as if they were flies. The giant Gila monster. Oh man, that that just scares me. That was put up by Hollywood uh, pictures. I love it. I gotta screens. confess, I wasn't, lied. Wasn't I lied. Great, There's a, just a, go ahead, Tom. Wasn't that wasn't it just great schlock from the 
a good old ha- good old haunted uh, drive-in movies that you would go see, Al, as a teenager? Yeah, right. Hmm. I didn't go see that stuff. Uh, sure. It looks like Irwin Allen took a, a little bit of a... Uh, that's like his playbook of oh, stock yeah, footage really was. and lizards doubling S- as small giant lizard with miniature dinosaurs. Cars. Yeah. Well, I do want to mention a couple more because I lied. I, I'm not quite done with the horror genre of the 80s. I want to mention Prom Night. I also had Jamie Lee Curtis. Don't have a clip. I have a poster for that. Would you like to buy one? Yeah. I have actually, several. Yeah, I, I'll buy I, one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or we could trade or whatever. But that they remade that recently. <laughs> we could do some trading. Or, well, a few years ago. But that was a pretty good about, you know, this taunted kid who – Got revenge by offing all the teens. Another movie like that was from, I think, 1976, Massacre at Central High. That was a pretty good movie that aired endlessly on HBO that I liked a lot, where um, this kid, I'll be brief, was working on his car instantly, and the jocks, like he's, there's, the car's on blocks, right? And he's working underneath it, and these jocks mess with him. They kick the block, and the car comes down, it cripples him. And so he gets revenge one by one on all of the teenagers that had a part in him getting maimed. And one of those teenagers was Lonnie O'Grady, Don Grady's little sister, who went on to do Eight is Enough. And, and he was in My Three Sons. That's what I just yeah, said. Don, yep, no, my I three, did I say My Three Sons? Yeah, My Three Sons, Don Grady. Yeah, correct. Now, I didn't say it. Thank you for mentioning that. No, you did not but say it. she sadly died of a drug overdose. And now Don's gone himself due to cancer. It's really awful, but... You know, as we age, we're going to see all these iconic and some not so iconic but beloved actors and actresses pass away and directors. But um, not to be a downer. I want to also mention, I mentioned this at the end of our last pod blast, on October the 13th. I did mention this, but I have some new info about Atlanta Comic Convention's 100th convention. Forgot to mention the most important, if you're in Atlanta. Now, I know you might be in L.A. or wherever, another part of the world. You might be in England. But if you're in Atlanta... It's only $5 to get into this convention, which is pretty cheap this day and age. In the day and age of Dragon Con and San Diego Comic Con and certain horror conventions, 5 bucks to get in and free parking. And it's in the uh, area of North Druid Hills of Atlanta at the Century Center Marriott Hotel. And they're giving away over $600 in uh, cash credits. All you have to do is is just show up and buy a $5 ticket, and you get a raffle. The odds are good of winning. And they have T-shirts. That's on the 13th. Anyone watching live, yes, Sunday, October 13th, 2019. Sunday, August 15th. 100th convention. They claim it's the only convention in the world to reach 100 shows, and that's because they do it every three months. Woo! Shout out to Atlanta Comic Convention. I love you. I'll be there. sounds awesome. Well, and horror. All right, Tom's got something. But do you guys... It's this Sunday, August... The this 15th, 2021, movie. first one since Something COVID. Something happened. Did you see that? Something different. It's not a shooting star. It's from 1988. Why here? Why Something now? everyone's afraid of. Why clowns? Ah. They've been knocking them dead all over the universe. What are you going to do? Knock my block off. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> Soon they'll be doing it at a theater near you. <laughs> Killer clowns from outer space. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Did you know that MGM at one time had uh, this series of DVDs called Midnight Movies, and that was one of them? I don't doubt that. But yeah. this, this, this is from 1980. It had the, the, a great character actor, John Vernon, yes. in this movie. Best known yeah. as, as the Dean in Animal House. Yes, exactly. He just, he just died uh, not too terribly Correct. long ago, unfortunately. He did a bunch of Fall Guy episodes, but I digress. Yeah, you know, sure. I love that stupid old lady show. I have almost I have every episode on 16 Millimeter. Is he anyway. the guy in Animal House? He said, someone dropped a whole bag of fizzies. No, no, no. No, he was, he was the dean. He was the he dean. Was the dean. Yeah, he was, he was the, the dean, wasn't he? No, he was the Dean guy. Warmer. Oh. <laughs> dean Warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, get it right, Al. 
And we can touch on so many horror way. movies. We haven't even discussed the Stephen King horror movies. Christine's, Firestarter. Creep and Show. All the, oh, I love Creep Show. Oh, don't well, get me started. Speaking of roaches with Creep oh, Show, oh, that's God, awful. Yeah. That's yeah. a terrible E.G. E. Marshall playing the, uh, the asshole. Almost said a bad word. Oh, boop, the jerk, boop, 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 boop. rich that. guy in the apartment that was see, mean to everybody. That was probably a racist. <clears throat> but that was great because he locked himself in that room and, and he was he had his comeuppance. Yeah, but he was afraid of bugs. Yeah, remember that? Oh, it was in his his raisin brand. <laughs> yeah, and that was, got all in the blender. That was wasn't that great? I mean, it was I great. Mean, it was good stuff. Another was, roach gross out scene was in. God, you ever see that movie? Uh, Problem Child. Okay, let's, let's listen to it. Problem Child too. Who are you? You know it's okay to be scared, right? Are you going to tell me what this is all about? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You've killed before. I see what you did there. Twelve Our terrifying tale. In the corners of this world. Help me. They'll drive you insane. A new generation of horror has risen from the dead. This September, it's coming out. So it really wasn't. There's a new creep show. Yeah, I know. I know it was. That's cool. A, that's, good. That's what I want to hit you with. But it wasn't fair to play the trailer because it's a very visual trailer. So go to YouTube, look it up. Creep Show 2019, a Shutter original series is what it says. September. Uh, we're in so, it says September 26th. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. So I'm just wondering, uh, has it has it actually dropped or, uh, you know. Is it a Netflix? Well, it's based on original the, or well, it's based on the 1982 film written by Stephen King and George Romero. But uh, I don't know. Oh my God! And we even talked about Night of the Living Dead, 1968, which just had a big anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't really say. Wow. It, just, it just says official. And Dawn trailer. of the Dead. So that look was it up. One, oh man! So it, look it up. It's did actually, you, did you guys see Dawn of the Dead? Yes. Great. Oh, yes. those effects. That's one of my favorite special effects guys, Tom Savini. He did the first Friday the 13th. That is a gore master. I've met him many times. Oh, and he's a, he's a good father, by the way. He's got lovely daughters, and but he is a madman when it comes to horror and gore makeup. Hey, and then there's also John Carpenter's They Live from 88. That's a cult classic. Love that movie where uh, Roddy Piper, yeah. former wrestler, he puts on these oh, glasses yeah, 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 and he yeah, notices yeah. they live. They li there's skeletons everywhere. Yeah, that's a Bill great movie. It's that great is movie. a paranoia classic. Yeah. If you're into paranoia it's pieces, Alan. he's such a dear boy. Oh, this is Jeffy. He's so full of fun. Oh, this is Anya. Isn't she just the sweetest thing? And this is their new friend Smedley. They're giving him a party. It is coming out party. Oh, the children are having such fun there, <laughs> laughing and laughing. <laughs> and it all began here, one foggy winter's evening. 9, 1971. Oh. He ought to be ripe. It's party time. It's the shank of the evening. This movie. My friend Orville and I are having cocktails in ten minutes at my island cottage. Alan, the crap we're out not of really going to take that thing back to the cottage. Of course they are. I, Alan, take this body. Yeah, and welcome to it. You deserve everything you're getting. <laughs> There's no business like show business like. And I think, in time, we may get even closer. 
I'm going to take your man. scraps and that feed them like to my dog. So this is one of the right. one of the creepiest movies <laughs> you'll ever see. I don't tell me there's real dead bodies like faces of death. <laughs> no, 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 no. But but they look they look pretty real. But but what happens is they end up getting eaten. It's just children shouldn't play with dead things. And I saw that at the drive-in by myself, and I went, Nah, this was not a good idea. <laughs> wow. It was it was it was a it was one of those really schlocky horror movies. But again, it ha it still has a cult following to this day. Children shouldn't play with dead things. Don't watch it by yourself. And, and uh, uh, I hear you. At Dawn of the Dead, I mentioned Day of the Dead, 85. I had the honor of working with Greg Nicotero on The Walking Dead. And he, that was his big first special effects makeup job was in Day of the Dead. Really cool stuff that he did. He's, he's awesome. And I want to mention, of course, we didn't mention Piranha from the 70s. And they had a great remake. And Richard Dreyfuss had a small part in it and other big actors. But it came out in 2010, Piranha. It was really, really good. I mean, the effects, and Greg Nicotero worked on that picture as well. I think they shot it in New Mexico. It was fan fantastic. I mean, there's a scene where a girl's parasailing, and she goes down into the water, comes up, and it's just her torso. And she doesn't oh. even know. She looks down, and she's in shock. Like, well, we're, no, we're, we're, we're nearing the end of the podcast. Well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay. We're near the end of the podcast, so we're going to have to wrap it up. Okay. But not to cut away from it. We have talked a lot of talked a, a lot about a lot of great movies, right? Great rental ideas and ideas for you to yes. stream and, and purchase. And, That's but, some pretty crappy ones you know, too. What, one of the best, in a good way. Though. One of the best movies ever made, in my opinion, was Young Frankenstein, and we haven't talked about that, you know. So the Frankenstein. Frankenstein. You're putting me on. No, it's pronounced Frankenstein. Do you also say Froderick? No, Frederick. Well, why isn't it Froderick Frankenstein? It isn't, it's Frederick Frankenstein. I see. You must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? Of course, I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Oh, sorry, I, uh... You know, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm a rather brilliant surgeon. Perhaps I could help you with that hump. What hump? <laughs> that's great. That's great. I mean, that's a great. Don't movie. you have another clip too? Well, well look. Yeah. Look, from Young Frankenstein. From Young Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead yeah. and hit it real quick. Now, that brain that you gave me was it Hans Delbrooks? No. Ah. Uh, would you mind telling me whose brain I did put in? And you won't be angry? I will not be angry. Abby someone. Abby someone. Abby who? Abby normal. Abby normal. I'm almost sure that was the name. Are you saying that I put an abnormal brain into a seven and a half foot long, 54 inch wide gorilla? What? Is that what you're telling me? Wait, wait, get it up. What? Three syllables, yes. I love that. That's awesome. That's great. That was great. Let's listen awesome. to what. Let's listen to what Mel Brooks. This, this is a short clip. Let's listen to what Mel Brooks had to say about working uh, with Marty Feldman on Young Frankenstein. Here it goes. Terry, when you, when you were doing a scene, I don't know if you had many scenes where you had to, but if you had to make eye contact with Marty Feldman, how did you do that? <laughs> I crossed my eyes and I looked up at the hell. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't have any scenes with him. I did that. Well, no, I had no, you had the happy normal. You had the charade scene. Okay, then yeah, I did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the only way to really hide from Marty Feldman is to put your nose against his. <laughs> that he'd never see you. He'd never know where you are. He only looked out of the sides of his eyes. 
That's great. That's great. Isn't that great? Later, I did a movie with Marty called Silent Movie. Uh, and we had a great wheelchair chase. We were chasing, uh, we could chase you tonight. <laughs> we were, we were Terry chasing in uh, Paul Newman in the picture. And, uh, and you know, Dom was pretty good at it. I was with the three of us, Dom DeLuise, Mel Brooks, and Marty Feldman. But Marty was incapable of running anything. You know? <laughs> so I well, would say, OK, we would be in a building. Dom would go. I would go, and you'd hear, crash. <laughs> and I'd wait, and I'd say, well, are you all right? I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Then we go outside. Bang! <laughs> Tom, are you okay? I'm okay. Mel, you, I'm okay. Marty, I'm all right, love. I'm all right. I'll be all right. <laughs> he was, you know, I don't know why. He, I don't know. What do you not know? Uh, you know, the only. You know, the only, knows the only thing I used to say to, to waitresses. He wants two eggs sunny side up. Put one here and one there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's great. That that, that was a, that was an interview uh, with, uh, with some of the cast. Terry Gar, unfortunately, is not in good health. She's in a wheelchair right now. It's sad. She it's was sad. so lovely in Young Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. and Livin Malton is doing the entire uh, interview with uh, them on a stage somewhere. As a matter of fact, Mel Mel I've goes a, Mel goes around and does some stage shows. He was. He's either coming here or he's already been. I, I'm sorry, I don't recall the dates, but but I really w wanted to go. Would love to go see him because they say he's just a real hoot uh, up there on stage by himself, just like Billy Crystal did the, the one man shows. Well, Mel Brooks goes around and does these, which I think are pretty fun. Guys, so what, anyway, what's your favorite uh, ventriloquist, scary dummy, ventriloquist dummy in horror movies? Uh, Charlie McCarthy. Okay, so did you like magic? No, did you like magic with Hopkins? I like Chucky from the Child's Play series, and that's all I'll say because we're running out of time. But those movies were really good. Started in 88 with Catherine Hicks. Great series. Bride remember, of Chucky. Remember the right. scary dolls in Barbarella with Jane Fonda? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, there's teeth. Yes, yeah. yes. And yeah. now I've got a question for each of you before we wrap. Do you have a favorite death in a horror movie or memorable or memorable? Killing, deaths, whatever. Just think on it. Maybe well, I'll that, tell you mine if you need to think, no, or no, if ahead. you know, then go ahead. No, go ahead. Tell us yours first. All right. This is memorable. I didn't like it at all. But it was in Halloween 2. There was an actress named Pamela Susan Shoup who was lovely at the time. And this was set in a hospital, right? And Michael Myers, like, scalds her in this hot water. And it's, it's awful. Like, she's naked, topless. And he pours, he puts her head under the water and just melts her face off and her oh. boobs off. Ugh, I hated it. That's memorable, not my favorite, and it just—it was really disturbing. Well, uh, but that is disturbing. Yeah. Do you I, have a, a you know, I'll memorable? Go, I'll, go, I'll go back even further to Bride of Frankenstein because at the end of the movie, uh, Frankenstein had a bit of a personality in that movie, as we all know, and so uh, he lets Doctor Frankenstein and his wife go, and he says, "You go, you live," and then he his hand reaches up slowly on the lever. And he looks and turns to Dr. Pretorius, you stay, you die, dead, or something like that. And he pulls the lever down, and the whole thing starts to blow up. That's, that's just a great classic uh, scene. It really is. And by the way, real quick, in, in the movie Van Helsing, um, that you guys saw, The Greatest Showman, who, who was in that again? The, uh, Hugh Jackman was Hugh the Jackman, star of that. Yeah. And uh, at the end of that movie, the Van Helsing movie, it ended very Zach much. In it. It, it ended very much like. Uh, Mary Shelley's original Frankenstein book. If you remember, I had that remember, on DVD. We the, need to watch. Remember that. the Frankenstein Start monster off. drifting yeah. off on the raft into. That's how her book ended. Right on. If you if you if you go look at the very last chapter of her book, yeah, like you all have that on hand. But I, I thought that was kind of interesting how they pulled that little teeny tidbit from her book at the very end, and that's how they ended the damn movie. I thought that was very cool. Al, will you got a favorite? Probably House of Wax. When they fall into the big, there's a big <laughs> container of wax, you know, with the, with the wax figures. Yeah, 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 yeah. When they fall into the wax. Yeah, Madame Tussauds wax, yes. Yeah. yeah that's well, that's like great. That. Well, this has been fun. We, we went a little over. We, we got stupid and crazy really. in places to, to where we rambled a little bit more than we normally do. We apologize for that. Sometimes that's going to happen. We'll try not to look at it. And I want to wish everyone a happy Halloween, a safe 
and fun Halloween as Al plays us out with yes. the extra Friday the 13th. Have Tubular Bells. Have Thanks for listening, everybody, and happy Halloween. Take care. Happy Friday the 13th. I love that song. Yeah, I love that it. song. Blah. One of my uh, favorite movies, The Exorcist. Well, favorite horror movie, I oh, should say. I thought Not a favorite movie. We're back live, everybody. Okay. Back live, 678-996-1776. We saw the phones lighting up. We couldn't take the calls because it was a pre-recorded segment. Now's your chance to call in with your favorite horror movies. That's right, 678-996-1776. And if you want to talk to Al... Tom a chance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Can I say this? And tell us about your All experiences right. with this horror. This is um, this is actually our last show here on the radio. What? Yeah, the last show. I didn't but know you know, it's been fun the whole time we've been here because. Um, uh, things change, but you know that's okay. We had a good time, but we still do the podcast or hey. pod blast. We still made history, even though we're about to be history for now. Can but we'll be back because we are Atlanta's first radio show about pop culture. And I want to remind everybody about our Facebook page because every Sunday we do a show on video. And it's going to be at 3 o'clock tomorrow. And our Facebook group is Nostalgic Pod Blast, one word, P-O-D-B-L-A-S-T. And tomorrow's topic is the Twilight Zone and the Outer Limits. Woo! And we're going to be in Tom's Studio West. And we do a show almost every Sunday. So we're not going anywhere. We're still on uh, yeah, we're... SoundCloud and Stitcher and uh, Apple and iTunes. We're on all of your podcast yeah, outlets. We'll still, we'll still be out there. We'll still be out there. Um, I won't because he's on mic right now. <laughs> hey, six, seven, real quick, uh, if, you, if you want to give us a call, 678 678- Nine nine six seventeen seventy six, and you can be part of our last radio terrestrial broadcast of two thousand twenty. This is twenty twenty, right? Twenty twenty, and next week we'll have our regular weekday people. Some, some will, some won't. Will be on, but there'll be a in studio with Kara next Friday, March twenty seventh, twenty twenty, and we'll have Sully and uh shannon and kara so tune in and, and you never know we might have some surprises so now chance has anybody ever bitten you on the neck mm, yo mama i don't know what you're <laughs> what i'm just kidding <laughs> oh. i'm referring to the hickey Somebody needs to. I'm, I'm referring to the hickey i'm seeing on your neck no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding it, now if anybody has a favorite horror character that we did not cover on that horror broadcast part two uh, please let us know because there's so many things we didn't talk much about the mummy, uh, all the different mummy uh, incarnations that have come along, including the latest one, the when Universal tried to reboot the classic horror franchise with the mummy from with Tom Cruise. Did you see that one? No. Yeah, it wasn't. It was. It was forgetful. The effects were pretty good. There's a lot we left out, like in yeah. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I like the 1978 version. I know we'll digress on that, but that movie always freaked me out. Where you saw the little dog with the human head. There was a little moment. Anyway, it, it's a great movie. 1978's Invasion of the Body Snatchers with the Pod People taking no, over people's bodies when they sleep. They get you when uh, you no, sleep. No, is that the one with Donald Sutherland? Or yes, okay. Donald Sutherland. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but, but I won't do but, the sound because I'll blow. Al's ears. But you know, but uh, Nicole, Nicole Kidman did one um, after that, yeah. which, which you know, we can't find it anymore. I mean, there was I, one in 93, uh, too. Gabby Ann Moore was in it. It was okay. called Body Snatchers. But Body Snatchers. It, it, it's, it's a great, uh, great Yeah, it was, a great, it was a great film. It was a great subject matter, is what I should say. Uh, you ready for me to give you the mic back, Al? One more thing I want to mention. Not this isn't a one more thing, but I want to remind everyone that the Invaders airs at midnight tonight on Me TV at midnight, and it's yeah, channel. Invader shirt on. Chan, I'm wearing an Invader shirt. Yeah, my Ooh. green one. But tonight's episode is episode four, The Leeches, and it has Ooh. great music, original music at the time by Dominique Frontier. Great story, and Diana Vanderbliss, who was a hottie at the time, is in it, and she's the one. If you were listening in our fourth show about uh, the Quinn Martin shows The Fugitive and Invader. She's the one that says a murderer in our clip right before we transition to Invaders. I'm sure no one knows what the heck I'm talking about, but no anyway. So tune in to The no Invaders and it's channel 32 on AT&T, Uverse, and Dish Network, The Invaders. Well, well that's, that's true. The number is 
seven six. I just gave the number out. <laughs> so Al, what was what was? Now you said you did not like splatter movies so much. So what was your what was your favorite classic horror uh, person? I mean, was it Frankenstein? Was it Werewolf? Was it? That's could, a good question. It couldn't um, have been the bride of Frankenstein because she no. wasn't all very all, all very much. I always thought they should have done a follow up with her because uh, they did so many Frankenstein movies with Lon Chaney playing Frankenstein. My like favorite that. is Dracula. Bella, or. Christopher what Lee? was the guy who played in Nosferatu? Well, that's the guy that no, I, he no, was great. No, the silent movie? No, 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 no. The Klaus, remake in the Klaus, 70s. Klaus Kinski, I think was his name. Klaus Kinski. Klaus. But, but, he was but, German. He look, but he looked so much like the original. That's true. Nosferatu, he would look great. He's great. Which is what they meant to do that. Matter of fact, I got a poster from you one time to give to a friend at Turner. Yeah. Um, I've got some more of those posters. Yeah, and it was Nosferatu. a great, great looking poster. Well, those uh, posters bring a pretty good price on eBay. Yeah. But, um, I guess my it would be Bella Lugosi. Bella, Bella. I like him. So, so even on here, I like Boris Karloff too. But Bella just, I just liked his. his I don't know. I just his, liked his him. persona. Yeah, because he did Mark of the Vampire, uh, which was after mm -hmm. obviously Dracula, and then of course he did Dracula. But he did so many other classic characters. Now, even though uh, White Zombie was not a good movie, That's I mean, a I mean, it's a crummy movie, good. but. His character was great at it. I mean, it with a mustache and a and a little beard, and he, he looked he looked very ominous, very, very horrific. Um, I even liked I, him, man. You didn't like? I, I like the Phantom Creeps. Remember that? Yeah, he was in that? yeah. Well, he that was, was a serial, but I had the feature version. He was film. no. The robot was the robot was great. At oh that yeah. Movie. Z uh, Z Zor what was his name? Zorka. Z yes. Z Zorka the robot, I think. Was yeah, name. I think so. And and there was a there was a guy locally that remakes. Some of those uh, uh, statues that you resin statues that you can buy, that uh, would, w he would also he would be at uh, Professor Morte's Spook Show, yeah, the uh, plaza. back when it well back when it was in Avondale Estates after right, the plaza, right. then it was at Avondale Estates and he went back to the plaza, but uh, it, there was a guy there that had one for sale. They went like three hundred some bucks for it. And I'm going wow, that's even too much. That's way too much money. You, know, you didn't boy, buy it? That was a trash can. What was that? That was me do? kicking the trash can. Wow. <laughs> it's, it was like Jimmy Durante kicking Go the can just, just in, the mad, chance. in the mad, 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 <laughs> mad, mad world. <laughs> is what it was. But but anyway, it's this has been a, a, a great experience. Um, I can't think of a better way to waste a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun. I will, I will miss it. Being here on the radio, but you know yeah. there is the there is the pod blast. It still goes on. True, true, uh, so true. There is, true. There is. You can for some and, and, and we'll out. and we'll still do that. And and uh, look at look on the bright side. You want we we will be in a sequential order that makes sense. Right. Because because right. the last podcast that you just heard, <laughs> we were wishing everyone a happy Halloween. Well, yeah, <laughs> we did that last Halloween. And we so, uh, coming up here at four o'clock. We're going to play a Christmas episode. To kind of end things, yeah, yeah and exactly. so that's coming up. What, you, you, what do you want? Wait, what, Chance? Did you want to say something? It's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to. And we transition to Christmas. Uh, Christmas in March is trending on Twitter right now, and we want to lighten the mood. And I, I have something funny for our listeners. If you go to Antenna TV's Facebook page today is Rose, Rosie O'Donnell's birthday. Look at the comments; they're like all negative, and there's some really funny jokes about Rosie O'Donnell. On the antenna oh, really? TV Facebook page, well, think post about, about this, you know, birthday. It's hilarious. Despite her political me. views, she's she's a talented person. Oh, I, uh, she's a great uh, actress. I, I, I ain't defending her. <laughs> well, well oh, so, no, no, she's a. I mean, what was that movie she was in with? Um, it was a baseball movie. The Flintstones. Oh, oh, League of Their Own. League of Their Own. That was a good movie. Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, I like that movie. But but she's also coming back on the air with a uh, talk show, talk show? To, uh, to to help to help mend the nation to help oh. to, to oh, bring in. She's no, supposed no, to be no. in Canada right yeah. now. <laughs> That's true. They're she's all supposed, supposed to be in Canada. But, they but, they decided not to go. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But, but anyway. she's supposed to come back on the air. Well, uh, she had one for a while called Rosie and then she right, just quit. Right. She yeah. did. she did. And it, it was doing quite well actually. But she but she doesn't like uh, our president. At yeah. all. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know. <laughs> so anyway. So but, anyway. Anyway, before we head out of here, do well, you we're not heading out. We're going to stay and do our Christmas show, but yeah. But yeah, well, I mean, we'll, yeah. that'll, that's pre-recorded. Yeah. Well, we won't be here live. But anyway, uh, do you have one more thing to add you, before we wrap things up? 
I thought you do. I about do. Your, mm, about someone who passed away. Well, I mean, I used to be a country DJ for a very long time. I worked over at uh, Kix, a country station here, which is now Still New Country 101.5. But anyway, I played Kenny Rogers a lot, and I, I, I've liked his. I met him once. He's at the radio station several times, and uh, he was very pleasant, very nice guy. And his passing is he's he's a musical icon, and I, I the gambler. Yeah. My no favorite song by Kenny was one called Daytime Friends. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was the Daytime Friends, Nighttime Lovers, you know. That's, that's a great song. But anyway, the passing of Kenny Rogers is my one more thing, and I hated to see it. But he lived a long time. I think it was 81. Yeah, 81. Did, did, 81. You, did you see him in concert? Yes, I did. The very, now get this, I'm glad you brought that up. I almost forgot. But uh, the very first concert I ever went to uh, in my hometown of uh, Wilmington, it's in North Carolina was Kenny Rogers in the first edition. Yeah. Just dropped in to see what condition my condition was and in. And they did that, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, no, and that the was the very was... first concert I ever attended in my whole life. And the no. dude wasn't even there. <laughs> Big Lebowski, sorry. No. Well, I mean, that was a great movie. But anyway, uh, that was my first concert. Do you, do you, what was, I think I've asked you before, what was your first concert? Oh, gee, my first concert was Al Jolson? <laughs> funny, funny. I wish. It, it was either, I think it was Chicago. Uh, oh, great group. group. Chicago, back when it was all original members. Mm -hmm. Me and my good buddy Don Charles went and saw Chicago. And yeah. Three Dog Night, I've seen Brad, I've seen James. Three Dog Band. Night was one of my favorite groups, too. I've seen too. Candy, I've seen Plastic Ono Band. So. I've seen I've seen, I've seen Paul McCartney. I've stuff. seen, uh, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I didn't see the Beatles, but I saw Paul. Right. I saw Paul twice. Exactly. Paul McCartney Wings the first time. Yeah. My first one was Madonna, Like a Virgin Tour. Uh, I think I, think I asked you that. I, I was going to say, uh, shout out to my advertisers on this station. Not one of my advertisers canceled. They are in it to the very end, and we'll be on next week. So shout out to all my wonderful well, advertisers. Actually, the station will be here next week. They'll be... Um, Dawsonville Gun, Everdry Waterproof. They'll be here next week. In, Flooring in, Zone. And, and uh, uh, Sully will be here with Billy Brew and you know some other people. So... Uh, Quick weight loss centers. The last official day of the station is next Friday. But um, anyway, I want to thank Will Regan for uh, letting us be here. Absolutely. And, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, 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 he did a great job with what he had to work with. And I, I want to you know, give him a shout out that uh, we appreciate it. And last call for calls. Talk about uh, your favorite horror movie or Christmas special. We're going to talk about next the great Christmas TV specials of yesteryear. And one more horror movie I didn't mention, What's Salem's that? Lot. It was a TV movie. Loved it. I'll just leave Actually, it at that. you know, I Thought saw that. I, I did like that okay. I saw that. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, to all my fans out there, <laughs> I just want to say it's what? been great. <laughs> and I'm not on a Christmas show. <laughs> hey, hey, for those Tom looking, is not on the show. For those though. looking for Tom on Facebook, he has a, he's incognito. You Basil might. Chesterman is uh, his no, Facebook no, it's, handle. It's Basil. Basil. Basil Chesterman. You can't even say it right. Well, I'm used to cooking. I cook a lot. Basil, <laughs> you put that in your food. But uh, remember, our Facebook group, Nostalgic Pod Blast, one word. We do a show on video. It's great. I'm telling you. And it gets better, and you can get caught up in all of our past shows. Like next week, we were going to do one on classic commercials, including now banned cigarette ads. We were ready to go, and then we got the word about Oh, that station. episode. I remember that one well. <laughs> a lot of cigarette <laughs> lot of commercials, commercials in that. But it's on SoundCloud. Go to Al's place on SoundCloud. You know, it's funny, not to change the subject, but... And they're all listed on our Facebook but, group. But, you know, Chance is so funny. You know what he says all the time? But, uh... I do. I say but, it all uh, the time. But, uh... It's like, like, but, uh it's like people say, like, like. But, uh... It's like... <laughs> but, uh well, well, Ted always used to say, oh, oh, oh. Who did that? Ted Turner. He would always That's go, right, uh, that's right. Uh, uh, you know, not that Ted's listening. Fellas, we made history, man. The first time a podcast was on terrestrial radio and the first pop About culture pop, show yeah, in yeah. Atlanta radio ever well there's not really i mean there's there's pop culture places i mean size i suppose but i've never heard of a pop culture pot place in market number eight atlanta baby yeah so. yeah yeah i, I have a sure. idea so. no but it's there, been fun there was one more thing i wanted to say but i i don't remember what it was now so see, see what happens it's because you're old see what happens when you get a little older <laughs> You, you you and, and it was important too and i don't yeah. remember what it was and, and the sad thing is we didn't get to air we did a show with our friend jim gossett in your studio al in yeah. your house mm -hmm. and i wanted to air that on the radio but it's on our facebook group all of our past shows are that was a fun show County. uh jim yeah. and uh, christina was there S saturday night live versus yeah. sctv look for that one and uh and one on bill tush, our friend bill tush we interviewed him right and that was a great show but again our facebook group like it 
and you'll see all of our shows and videos. So now let's turn it to Christmas time, Christmas in March. Hashtag Christmas in March. But oh, I wasn't on that one either. <laughs> you were working, it wasn't on that but it, we introduced our friend to Danny. He was one of our is one of our contributors. So Danny was one of our guests that day. So Danny. well, the Christmas show is Pod Blast Danny. number twelve. That is correct. We so have what twenty two in the camp. We're gonna we're gonna record our twenty third tomorrow, tomorrow in yeah. Tom's home studio. First time in Tom's studio. And tomorrow we we'll, uh, what we're, we're Twilight doing Twilight Zone, Zone and, outer, and limits. outer Limits. And we're prepared and locked and loaded. What was your favorite? And everybody, stay safe. Stay, what was stay your favorite, court. Twilight Zone or Outer Limits? Probably Twilight Zone because it was like poetry. Rod Sterling was a genius, but I like Outer Limits too. But Twilight Zone, yeah. Well, well, Outer Limits made you think more. That's, that's for true. Sure. And plus, it was an hour long, so you got to grab. Twilight some, Zone was well, thirty Twilight minutes, Zone, right? But except for season four, Twilight. We'll talk tomorrow about that. But yeah. Twilight Zone was an hour long for only one season of their five seasons. Yeah, but right. you never see Correct. those in reruns anymore. True, yeah, because it's a time constraint issue, except me TV sometimes will air on occasion a block of one hour. And they were videotaped. They weren't, uh, that's they weren't two. filmed. That's season two. Right. You're right. So, no, they weird. shot those on film. No, no, no. There was oh, yeah, one they season, did. There was one season that was video. I thought you meant the hour long. On no, video. I, I, no, I, right. I want to say that I was at the hour. I thought it was the hour long. No. Well, I, the, anyway, I'll have our research tomorrow. And it's not Some, the whole season. It's six episodes. In, correct. Correct. Oh. They, they shot them with a uh, camera. In really? Night really? of the house. Meek, the Christmas, we're talking about in our Christmas special, there was a great uh, Twilight Zone with Art Carney playing a drunken Santa Claus. Yes. It's called Night of the Meek. Yeah. And it's a heartwarming story. Ah, I just love it. It's one of my favorite you know, Twilight Zones. I think when Rod Serling wrote those, I think he must have been really on some pretty good drugs. <laughs> you know, well, he he would be. smoke like two packs a day of cigarettes, and that's yeah. what killed him. I mean, how could you come up with some of the storylines he did? Yeah, I mean, well, it's just amazing. Him, him, and the, him and the guys that wrote and <laughs> did the cartoons over at Warner Brothers. Because if you watch some of those black and white ones, they're out there. They are just Oh, YouTube has a little some of that stuff. Well, well, so was out of the wink, inkwell with uh, the Betty Boop, some of the Betty Boop cartoons. You yeah. go back and watch those. You go, I don't watch Betty Boop. You watch some of them, and they are just the animation and some of the innuendos in there is just amazing. Well, I know. Well, those were for adults in the movie theaters before the feature. Well, well exactly, exactly. For. Yeah, we talked about that. I mean, yeah, cartoons are made for adults originally in yeah. movie theaters. We did a show last week on cartoons, and it's on our Facebook group. It's one of our better shows, our 22nd show. So on cartoons. that's what you're referencing. Alan. Right, right. For right. the radio people that don't know, because they weren't exactly. probably on our Facebook. Exactly. Okay, all right. Well, well listen, it's been fun. It's been yeah. great. I want to say bye, Susan. And I look forward to tomorrow. And y'all, uh, uh, y'all tune in tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow. All right, to we're going to have, uh, you know, our Christmas show. Hey, uh, Sam. And then later on in the replays, you'll hear the horror show later on. Are we going to come back live after the Christmas, or is this going to be it? I haven't made that decision. Probably All right. not. Well, Probably we'll not. see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, we'll six see. seven eight nine nine six seventeen seven six. I swear to goodness, our phones were lighting up, but we couldn't take the calls, and now nothing. All right. This <laughs> is. <laughs> this is. This is WTZA, Decatur, yes, Atlanta. You know. CBS presents this program in color. Hey, fellas, you know what time it is? It's Pod Blast time! Pod Blast! And welcome to another Pod Blast. Our buddy Tom can't make it today. He's out um, making money. Making money. You know, he's uh, he's out there making a lot of money like uh, we should be doing. But we're having a good time anyway, right? We are. And in his place, we have our good friend Danny. Yeah. Daniel Cochran is back. Hello, everybody. I have in to interject studio. here. Um, my wife came up with a very uh, interesting moniker for all of our viewers that you are now officially our audience. I love it. Yeah, that, yeah, Don't the, you like that chance? The audience is listening. Good stuff, Danny. Thanks for making the trip, man. You drive over an hour to get to the studio. I do, but you know what? Each way. There's something right around the corner. What is that? Kind what of, is that? Something's kind of special coming. Christmas Some, time. A holiday. Yeah. Saint, Saint, uh, Saint Nick. So why don't you tell us what kind of show we're going to have yeah, today, chance. chance? Fill us in. Well, today's topic is Christmas on your television set throughout the generations. Whether it's a Christmas episode of your favorite sitcom or dramatic series, or a special like the Andy Williams specials of the past. And the cartoons like, You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Grinch. 
You know, but this is going to be special because we're yeah, not Frosty just... the Snowman. Oh, yeah. All the ones you know and love are dear to your heart. But this is going to be a Christmas special like none other in that you're going to have clips of rare oddities. Have you ever heard of a Christmas show that had a drive by shooting in it? Well, you, will... Not... You, you will now. Uh, have you Good heard? Grief. Did you know that Captain Kirk seduced one of his crewmen on a Christmas episode of Star Trek? That's not really a big surprise. <laughs> well, we're going to have the heartwarming stuff, but also some weird stuff like that. So stay tuned. But Tell us what kind of weird stuff, Chance. We'll get to it. But, but there's just one more thing. What is that, Chance? One more thing. It's our new segment, One More Thing. Oh, that's right. One more thing. Come on, Al. Roll with it. One. There's just one. Roll with it. Okay, I got to get serious here. I... Well, I'll play this that another WTZA, time. This is Decatur, Atlanta. Exactly. Uh, that was our 12th show. Our 10th or 12th? Our 12th show, I believe. Yes. And it's on our YouTube channel, uh, The Nostalgic Pod Blast on YouTube. And uh, it got screwed up when we did it live um, when it was new. Uh, there was some audio glitches at Al's studio, and the audio kept dropping. So I'll probably have to redo that one like I did today with this little live wraparound and kind of like a Mystery Science Theater 3000, except, except I'll comment more. That actually was a good one. There's a lot of clips in it of Christmas specials of the past, and Danny makes up a, makes a good point that back then you just had a TV guy. When we were kids, we're old. You didn't have a DVR. You know, you didn't have a, even a TiVo before the DVR. You just had a TV guide, and if you missed the special, you missed it. You had to tune in to see the Charlie Brown Christmas special and all those great specials of the past. But that's another episode. I just wanted to play a little bit of the beginning. That was our last radio broadcast before freaking COVID-19 shut down WTZA. It was a great station uh, on AM and FM in Atlanta, and uh, and so we weren't canceled. The whole station just went dark because a lot of the advertisers, in fact, most of them, which stayed till the very end, couldn't continue because they were closing their door, doors, the do, 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 doors, I can't talk, and uh, cutting back, which is understandable. So I'm, I'm going to wrap this in a little bit, but just to talk a little bit more about horror, I touched on this movie and what you just heard, Grizzly. And this was shot in 1975 in North Georgia, in Clayton, Georgia. Not the county, but this town. And it's about a giant grizzly bear that's killing people. It was very gory. And uh, and I just think it's a great drive-in movie. It's played at the Starlight Drive-In here in the Atlanta area in the past. Um, and it's just a hell of a lot of fun. And it's one of those few movies. And this, uh, this doesn't make me happy, but it shows a kid getting killed in front of his mom. She's like, you know, drying her clothes on a clothesline. And the bear just rips the kid's arms off. And she's right in front of her. Ah! just kind of a shocking scene but it wasn't real you know it's just makeup and stuff but it was kind of interesting so there are before the camera if you're listening if you ever want to see these images because I do reference a lot of stuff like a camera and that's because it's live in our Facebook group the nostalgic pod blast and on our YouTube channel the nostalgic pod blast so recommend grizzly um and then a more recent one um not really that recent I think it's 21 years old now but hollow man with Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth Shue. It's the Invisible Man. The Invisible Man story where he's terrorizing everyone. And at the time it had some pretty revolutionary CGI effects. But that's a good good horror movie. And what I like best about horror movies of the 80s and even the 90s like Scream and Hollow Man. I like the mix of comedy and sensuality. There's always nudity. And then of course uh, gore. I think it's a good combination. Suspense. And this director of Hollow Man, uh, Paul Verhoeven, he directed uh, RoboCop and uh, what was that other one? Uh, damn, Showgirls. But he did uh, oh a space movie, Kill 'Em All, Starship Troopers. That's it. And um, the cre creepy thing about this guy, this director, and he's from uh, from Holland, is that he always has a rape scene. So that's not cool, right? Now, here's another more recent movie. I think this is suspense, terror, and horror. It's a Mark Wahlberg movie called Fear. And it has a great cast. Reese Witherspoon's in it. Alyssa Milano. Um, God, Christopher Crowe wrote it, who created BJ and the Bear for television, which was a ripoff of uh, a combination of Smoking the Bandit and Convoy, the movies. 
anyway, um, I really like this movie, Fear, and uh, uh, William Peterson is in it as Reese Witherspoon's dad, and he had a great role in To Live and Die in L.A. in the 80s. And then the mom went on to play a judge in a show, um, Judging Amy, on CBS. But anyway, it's, it's an underrated, great movie. And in the trailer, I'm going to say a bad word here, um, you see like Mark Wahlberg's character, who's like a foster kid who got bounced from family to family, so he's a little jaded. Doesn't excuse the terrible things he does, but he's looking through the peephole, and they have this elaborate security system in their house. And so that you know they they fire up the security system, but they don't know that he's cut the cable and cut the cord, so the phone systems don't work. That's before the iPhone, right? This is like a 1996 movie, I think. And he's like, it could have been different, Mr. Walker. But I'm gonna win in the end. So let me in your fucking house. And my friend Hunter and I always laugh at that scene. And in the trailer, of course, they censor it. So let me in your house. But I just, I just love that scene. Um, and there's some pretty cool twists and turns in that movie, kind of like Cape Fear, the remake with Robert De Niro. That was a good one too. But I really liked uh, Fear. That's a good movie, man. And uh, he just does all sorts of funny, terrible things in that movie. Um. To get revenge. I love revenge movies, you know. Um, so, I guess I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, this was my nostalgic pod blast for the week. I was going to try to do a show Sunday. Maybe I will. I don't know. There's so much going on. I want to give a shout out to Atlanta Comic Convention at uh, the Century Center. It's a Sunday-only show from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And this is the first one they've done since the gosh-damned uh, COVID-19 hit from China and created havoc and death upon the world um and i don't know why we don't strike back you know whether it's uh bombing um this is really a, i'm sorry a little extreme here but blowing up the great wall of china something to get even with these guys because they really did create havoc upon the world and why aren't we doing anything you know why it's because we're bought and sold by china china owns this country i'm sad to say it's just a fact it does and if you if you don't think that you're unaware. You need to wake up. You need to get educated um, because China is taking over this country and the politicians are bought and sold. I'm not going to name names, but, you know, we, we need to get serious about, I don't know, I'm going on a, on a tangent here. So I'll just, this is a nostalgia show. This isn't a political show, but um, this Comic Con, Atlanta Comic Convention will be the first one since COVID-19 hit. And like I said, it's only five bucks to get in. They have prizes. I'll be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm only going to be there for an hour or two. Oh, we got a call coming in. Let's see who's calling. The Nostalgic Pod Blast, you're on the air. Is this Barry? Hey, it's BK on the air for Nostalgic Pod Blast. Hey, Chance. Hey, man, you, you stopped me. You called it a good time. I was going off on a rant, and uh, I'm glad you interrupted me. But uh, I was, I, I'm look, hey, I'm always looking forward to being on your show, BK on the air and WBHF, and tune in live 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Atlanta time, Saturdays. Well, you mentioned uh, you're talking more horror, and uh, happy Happy Friday the 13th to you and everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday the 13th to you too, brother. I love that. That uh, Wow, Friday the 13th is 40 years old. And uh, Friday the 13th, part three in 3D actually premiered on this day. In 1982. Back, uh, back in 1982, actually premiered on Friday the 13th. And I thought that was a great gimmick. I think they all should have premiered on Friday the 13th but, uh, or whatever, uh, if, if there were ones that it was available for it to come out as close to that as it could but that was cool that part three did come out you know i love the first i, first, I love the first three and i also really like part four wasn't part part four called a, a new blood friday 13th new beginning new beginning yeah that was with Corey Feldman, right yes yeah i i, I own the first four that was part five uh, actually part five i have it for the camera you i know you can't see it, it sounds like you're driving but part five is a new beginning New beginning. That's right. I have one through four uh, because to me those are the ones that are kind of really kind of still connected to me and and have a lot of rewatchability. Even part three and three D, which is hokey now to watch, not in three D, but it's actually still really well done and within the Friday the Thirteenth genre cinematic universe of Friday the Thirteenth. Every every one of after that to me got uh, a little worse as they went along. And did you notice something about? 
Friday the 13th films, as they started to progress on, is they got less and less gory. That's true. I mean, I, I don't know why. I don't know if it was like a budgetary thing where they didn't have a lot of money or they didn't have the, 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 uh, the effects professionals that they had in the old days. But they did. They got uh, they got progressively less gory, uh, which was a part of that. You expected that in the movie, but you didn't get it. And they got even more comical. I mean, Freddie, Freddie, uh, uh, the Jason Taste Manhattan to me is a comedy. Sure, they all they all they all had comedy elements to them early on. But you're right; it got a little more ridiculous and watered down. And part four was um, the final chapter, and that one was really gory. <laughs> that was. But anyway, the yeah, fifth like one's a new beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I like four. I think the first four are good, solid uh, Friday the 13th movies. Anything after that, to me, is rather forgettable. But if you're fans of the whole genre of Friday the 13th, or the whole series, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that if you're fans of it. But uh, it was pretty groundbreaking uh, when they came out. The first one, uh, everybody, some people said ignorantly that it's a ripoff of Halloween. It actually wasn't, because Halloween by John Carpenter, to me, was not a slasher film. It was a different type of horror film and that Friday 13th came along and it was very different from Halloween they were not alike I would agree definitely you also mentioned uh, Peter Verhoeven the, the director of uh, Showgirls and mm-hmm. Robocop and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Hollow Man mm-hmm. and uh, Starship Troopers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Flesh and Blood mm-hmm. um, he was uh, yeah his, his movies were uh, pretty intense and Another director, uh, you put me in mind of Peter Weller, that was in RoboCop. He started a horror film by director George P. Cosmatos called Of Unknown Origin. You remember that one? Yeah. Yeah, about the giant rat in his house. <laughs> it was like Willard on steroids. Yeah, it was a, it was a bodybuilding rat. <laughs> it was just like man versus animal, primal thing. And uh, I thought it was very well done. George P. Cosmatos, he... Uh, directed uh, the second Rambo movie, Rambo First Blood Part Two. He directed Tombstone uh, and uh, this unknown, uh, unknown origin movie. And if I'm not mistaken, did, uh, what's the name of the lady? Did Shannon Tweed is married to Gene Simmons from Kiss? Yeah, Shannon Tweed. Yeah, they finally got yeah, married. Was, Gene Simmons from Kiss. She, yeah, she co-starred in that with him and uh, on, she played his wife in uh, Unknown Origin. She's very, very pretty in that film. So yeah, it was... Uh, that's the one that kind of gets lost, and I bring it up sometimes. People go, oh, yeah, the giant rat movie. I remember that, and I forgot all about it. I don't, the movie didn't do very well in the theater, but I thought it was very well done. It's very creepy, kind of a scary, creepy movie. If you, if you revisit it, it's actually pretty good. It is. It is. Hey, and just to clarify, before you called, I was talking about how we should get back at China for the, the coronavirus. Not the people. I meant the communist government, but that's all I'll say about that. That's all I'll say about that. Anyway, getting back to the fun in the movies, uh, you know, something kind of cool is we're both on fistfulofradio.com, and now we're going to be on a little bit more than before, and I'm excited about it. Like, your show now comes on Friday afternoon. I call it the BK on the Air Double Shot. Two episodes back-to-back from 1 until 4 in the afternoon. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm looking forward to when you get a, uh, a set schedule up on the on the website, so everybody will know when everything's coming on. Cause it's kind of a it's kind of cool that the things are changing, but yeah, no, I don't think anybody's gonna know until we get a until we get a schedule up there. But yeah, you guys are you're kind of re you're uh, not really rebranding it, but you're you're giving a physical radio kind of a a facelift, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be exciting, I think. I do too. Now, you know, and I hope that um, Shannon and Kara will come back. That's to be determined because everybody wants to see them. But yeah, we're going to have some uh, programs about entertainment, sports, politics. Um, I can't announce just yet, but I, I just got another new show that's a great show. Trust me, it's a great show. I just They just sent it to me. I'll have to talk to them before I can make an announcement, but uh, I'm really excited about that. And uh, yeah, man, um, I'm going to play our stuff in the evenings and then stick to the stuff everyone knows and loves on Fistful during the day, except for Friday afternoon when it's the BK Double Shot starting at 1 o'clock. Yeah, I've got a great guy that does a, a, a talk show about the history of Brussels sprouts that I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> this is not going to be boring, man. We're going to come up with some good stuff for you. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Fistful of, 
Mutual Radio. I'm proud to be a part of it. And uh, you, you've got a, got a lot of possibilities of live broadcasting now. Uh, and a lot, the, the door is open. Uh, you and Sean on Fistful. I'm glad. Uh, He's I'm my partner, Sean O'Neill. Yeah. Right, right. His his show yeah. is Saving Our America. It's an awesome show. That's going to be airing a lot more frequently. And he's producing new content. And he sent he's sending me some new material too. And uh, yeah, he's my partner. And um, we're going to keep this thing going. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to what you guys are going to be putting together and coming up with. I'd love to uh, I'd love to uh, appear with Sean and uh, and maybe do a broadcast with him sometimes because he sounds he he sounds probably just as nostalgic as uh, as we are with all the things that we remember growing up as kids and, and in the past. And that's what he said. He told me offline, he goes, you know, I, I like your show because it reminds me of when I was a kid and the things I liked when I was a kid. And then he's more about the present. And, you know, your show's more about the present as well as the past. You know, I, I stick to the past, but I need to I need to bring it up to date a little bit like you do. But, you know, his partner, Randy Wiles, I work with at Cumulus, you guys have similar voices, I think. Like a lot of people say that I sound similar to your partner, Alan Sanders, um, you know, I, I, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I've just heard that from a lot of different people. I think you sound like Randy and Randy has a great podcast called cigar on the deck and he's interviewed Barbara Eden. I mean, he's got some great content, which may wind up on fistful of radio.com. We'll see. It's called cigar on the what? Cigar on the deck. Like you're on a back deck oh, having a cigar. Okay, good. Yeah, it's really good. Well, really well produced, and he has an original theme uh, theme song. Good. And then I added um, a great show, Pro Football Fast Break, um, with Tim and Jacob Boyd. And it, it's a lot of fun. It's an hour-long show about pro football, and it doesn't get into the politics. So nobody's taking a knee or anything like that during the Pro Football Fast Break. Well, at the time of this recording, it is Friday the 13th on Friday. You're actually doing this on Friday the 13th. I think that's really cool. But tomorrow when we do the uh, BK on the Air show at WBHL, look out. It's going to be uh, Saturday the 14th. And that's even worse. <laughs> there was a movie called that's Saturday the 14th. That, oh, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, okay. <laughs> That girl was so pretty in that Carrie from. I'll just. All right. I don't. I don't want to spoil anything. But from Give Me a Break. Well, anyway, she was pretty. Let's just. Let's just say we might. Uh, we might hear from Richard Benjamin and Paula Prentice uh, Friday the Fourteenth uh, tomorrow on. Uh, on the show. That's gonna be fun because I thought that was a wacky, wacky parody movie. It was kind of a goofy movie. <laughs> Richard Benjamin. <laughs> cool. Well, that sounds good, man. That sounds really good. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, and then I'm going to a show in Chattanooga right after. Anyway, uh, I, I didn't write down what it's called. I wanted to give them a plug, but oh well, I forgot. Let me look. What else you got, Barry? Um, you're on. Sounds like you're on the road. Yes, I am mobile. So on this Friday. So yeah, we're. Uh, I, I, it's weird listening to you on, during the day because I'm used to it Thursday night. But yeah, I was able to tune in uh, later in the, in the broadcast day in between your. Yeah. Uh, playing the radio show and, and uh, archiving that. So, uh, yeah. always a pleasure to call in, man. And I will see you tomorrow. Sounds great. BK on the air on WBHF. And you can stream it old school if you just want to, from the web, from your laptop or phone. You could use the app, of course, at TuneIn. But also, you could go to WBHFradio.org, not .com, .org and you can pick up the stream, but it's live 10 a.m. to noon. It'll be Barry, Alan Sanders, and I, and we're going to have a hell of a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And what the heck, if you're close in the North Georgia area around Bartow County, you can hear it on that old-fashioned thing <laughs> called your radio on AM yeah. 1450 and 100.3 FM, for God's sake. That's weird. Nobody does go. that anymore. There you go. Awesome, man. Thanks, buddy. All right, thank you. Later. You drive safe. We'll talk. To you. Right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. So that's Barry. There's just so much going on this weekend. That's why I don't know because I'm going to. Oh, it's FarleyCon. It's called F, like Chris Farley, FarleyCon in Chattanooga. And um, going to meet a friend there and have some fun and uh, just see what kind of comic. I'm a comic book nerd. Anyone that's watching on Facebook Live in the Facebook group, The Nostalgic Pod Blast, or in our YouTube channel, The Nostalgic Pod Blast, you can see boxes and boxes of comic books behind me. I've got 15,000 comics I've been collecting since I was 11 years old. So I just want to see what's going on at FarleyCon, which is in the Chattanooga, Tennessee area this weekend. Saturday is when I'm going. And then to Atlanta, the Atlanta Comic Convention. 
and they've had over 100 conventions, by the way. I think that's the only one in the country, or if not the world, that can make that claim. But this will be their first one, as I mentioned, um, since COVID-19 shut everything down. So that's going to be really, really, really cool. And again, thoughts and prayers to James Tim Walker, animator. He's undergoing a procedure today, a big-time medical procedure, and he's going to be conscious and drawing. He's going to be creating art while he's being operated on. And this is something to alleviate complications from Parkinson's disease. And he's just a hell of a guy. I want to hold up his book again before I sign off. It's called Shaken Not Broken. He's work, He's won awards, Emmy Awards. He's, this guy's a big-time, talented animator. Sergio Argones uh, wrote him personally, wishing him well, and sent him uh, some original art um, since Tim sent him his book. But I'll hold up some of his artwork before the camera before I sign off here. Um, he's, just, he's just an awesome guy, and I wish him all the luck in the world with the procedure that's happening today as I do this live, as I record this live on Friday the 13th, 2021, August, Friday the 13th, 2021. And uh, I'm sure he'll be fine, but he's just a really, really special person and super talented. And he's a member of the Cliffhangers. Look up Brotherhood of the Popcorn. It's a big documentary that was produced professionally by Hollywood director about their group of guys and gals, guys and gal that watch movies uh, every couple Saturdays. And uh, Woody Wise started that group. And Brotherhood of the Popcorn is the name of that documentary film. And nobody answered the trivia question. I'm glad Barry, and he may not have heard the question, but the question was, in exchange for a free DVD set, a voyage to the bottom of the sea with a lot of monsters, kind of keeping it in the horror genre season three volume two it's half of season three did jason ever kill an infant a baby in any of the friday 13th movies no one called to answer that so i guess i won't give away that set it's friday afternoon usually i do this sundays at 3 30 atlanta time so i know friday is always a dead day and there's other options there's other uh, talk radio people that are on at this time so anyway if you're listening to this on demand Feel free to answer that trivia question in the comments. Did Jason, yes or no, ever kill an infant baby? Not real people. I'm right to life. You know, I'm not doing this. Misunderstand what I'm saying. Just a trivia question. Did Jason Voorhees ever kill a baby in Friday the 13th? And I'll mail that set to you if you answer correctly. All right. So I'm going to sign off here in just a sec. I hope you have a great, great weekend and an awesome rest of the week. And try not to be too superstitious today on Friday the 13th. Appreciate you. And um, if I don't do a show Sunday, this will be my show of the week. I'll be back the following Sunday at 3.30 in the Nostalgic Pod Blast Facebook group. And our topic, well, I'm not going to give it away. I have a great topic, though. It's going to be a good one. Thanks for listening and watching. Have a great week. Thanks to Barry King for calling in. And re remember to tune in to BK on the Air, Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon, WBHFradio.org, or tune in. Be safe out there.